Hello, everybody, and welcome to TPK Roleplay. Uh, my name is Turk. I'll be your DM for the night. Uh, we have a classic dungeon crawling adventure, but uh, inspired heavily by one Matt Colville. Uh, I'm really excited. It's my first time. I'm also incredibly nervous because, again, first time. Um, and for the moment, I'm just going to throw it over to our players uh, if they'll introduce themselves in stream order. Uh, so that's starting with Tabletop Girl. Yes, I'm playing Lady Belina Griffinwood, and she's a high elf lacing a wizard. All right, Dev. Hey, y'all. I'm Dev, and I'm going to be playing Vale Starrywater, a tabaxi rogue. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> Tyrant, uh, playing Bernard Lamoyette, the grumpy, disgruntled uh, pal human paladin soldier. Uh, Chrissy. That's me. Okay. <laughs> My <laughs> name is Chrissy, and I'm going to be uh, playing Alora Aries. She's an elven Tempest cleric. She's a little confused. Sometimes gifts her inflict wounds and cure wounds mixed up. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Don't be all, though. Don't we all. And uh, hey, <laughs> I'm EG Critical. I'm playing Crovier, the hill dwarf druid, making his way down mountain to the town walking fastly uh to the rest of the party <clears throat> all right so i'm gonna kick us off with a little as we uh transition here the great kingdom was once a united and peaceful land ruled by a line of strong albeit eccentric royalty however 15 years ago the king perhaps one of the more eccentric in his line, was overthrown by a group of nobles that claimed the external threats of the kingdom demanded a tougher ruler and that decadence of the royals had corrupted the nation from within. Not a completely wrong uh, notion. Uh, and as much as the coup succeeded in putting the nobles in power, however, it failed its most critical task. The king lived and escaped to rally loyalist forces to his banner. Uh, the lands were quickly divided, both sides swirling with neighbors willing to shed one another's blood just for the sense of feeling safer. It quickly became clear, however, that no one expected much fight from the other side. The war, once thought to be decided in a few quick skirmishes, stagnated. The fronts became muddled with forces unsure if they would ever be an end of the conflict. Uh, rather than calls for peace and diplomacy, though, the cracks in the country fragmented. It started with the general proclaiming rulership of the town she had spent the past year defending. Then another followed suit, and another. A group of merchants declared an independent independence for their town with enough mercenaries to do something about it. A religious order created a sanctuary for the downtrodden. A local crime family made their unofficial rule far more official than ever before. Uh, a particularly charismatic donkey was lauded as the savior incarnate. And on and on and on until what was once a split line through the country had fractured into pieces. Uh, the war, despite all reasonings and sanity, is still ongoing to this day. Though many might not realize it, uh, most borders have cooled to the point where some have the audacity to call it peace. Those who know better are not so easily fooled. The Great Kingdom, now shattered like a puzzle, will need to be put back together. But what shape will it take, and by whose hand? Or perhaps there's some yet greater force that will come and wipe away this nation altogether so that may finally know peace. But we are far away from the hustle and bustle of the Civil War, far away indeed from much of any conflict but the haggling of prices for turnips and milk. The calm hamlet of Villain, a model example of a town unconcerned with the world, sits in the far northeast of the former kingdom. Beyond them lies the untamed wilderness of the borderlands, and even further still, the wastelands only fit for the roving hordes of monsters and beasts. When the war broke out, many had no idea until soldiers came to let them know that their taxes would be going to a new address. Then new soldiers came to let them know of another change, and another. All the while, the townsfolk simply went about their business, with not much trouble beyond a few scuff-ups or problems that any town might expect. It is here that our adventure begins. All right, so some of our characters have already been in the town of Elaine for some time, but I am going to roll a handy-dandy... Well, it's not really a D5, but it's a D6, and I'm lying about the results to see who is going to go first. Okay, so, Veiled Starry Water. You and all those associated with you are going to be entering the town. Uh, it is about late afternoon uh just after the bell for everyone to be kind of coming in from their farms or shops beginning to close and 
uh, for many, uh, for, and rather for some, a long travel is coming to a brief stopping point. All right. Veiled is going to be looking over some notes that he has written down from uh, some orders given to him by his uh, mentors. And he is going to just go over them, make sure that he has everything in order, that he's going in the right direction um, while heading for the tavern um, for a quick little drink, making sure, looking back over his shoulder, that Alora is following him. Yeah, so we'll just naturally transition. Alora, are you going to follow him or does something else catch your eye? Yeah, so Alora's going to kind of be following behind, a few steps behind, not quite, you know, uh, not quite paying as much attention, a little bit more interested in in watching the people around the town, not quite um, focused too much on getting to the tavern, but more interested in noticing who, who and what's going on. So she's not doing too much. She's kind of flighty. Mm -hmm. Very fair. All right. And then for our last two, let me roll this really quick. Okay. Uh, Lady Belina, how are you getting into town? Because I know Krover said he was falling and running down the mountain. So he's got a ways to go. <laughs> um, Belina is actually already in the tavern with her head hanging low with, <laughs> over a, uh, a stein of, of ale. And she's kind of trying to wipe away tears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I mean, you can go into that tragedy if you like, but also we'll be transitioning shortly to uh, the tavern scene. So, oh, I'll sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Crovar, Crovier, Cr Crover, Crovier, Crovier. Thank you. Uh, what? What is what is going on with you, man? Man, are you that that mountain? That mountain somewhere in this nondescript region of the world. It's a long mountain. It's a long it's a, hill. It's a hill. A mountain-sized hill. Hmm. For a mountain-sized hill dwarf. But yes, uh, Crovier's making his way downtown to town, um, <clears throat> looking for his way to the tavern as he makes his way by. May may uh, kind of see a. Uh, 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 a hunt he may get to one day or another, but um, takes a sip of his um, what do they call those? Water skins which is a wine skin in this case and uh, <sighs> makes his way down Perfect, uh, so one thing all of you will notice as notable travelers, adventurers or ne'er-do-wells of any sort is uh, this poster has been plastered all around your route. Uh, it, did I show the players? There it is. Okay. Uh, so, it's noting that the invincible overlord empowers the town council of Elaine to offer the following bounty for various uh, monster parts. It's been plastered all over the place, and so you're fairly certain at this point that whoever's in charge here, well, the one, they think very highly of themselves and their immortality, but two, they're paying fairly well for... Well, if you really uh, like taking the tails, tusks, ears, and tongues off of other things, then you can make a nice living for yourself. You imagine that many people might take it up on that. But still, let's move ourselves over to the bar. We're all good things. As we enter the Green Dragon Inn, Right. So, Bernard, you have not had a chance to introduce yourself yet. What is Bernard up to in his little table over there? So, Bernard has been here for a little while. Um, he, he arrived in town a few weeks back, um, or at least he, he's, he's kind of lost count of the days, but uh, he, he arrived a little while ago, and he's been kind of pretty stationary in the tavern, just drinking, drinking. And drinking and more drinking um, and right now uh, he's doing the other thing that he does which is sleeping and snoring very very loudly what does it sound like okay good 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 all right so we will have our first group enter here as I drag you guys in 
veiled starry water and Alora enter. And uh, from behind the bar, you see a, uh, a tall, thin, middle-aged woman with long, pale blonde hair tied up in a bun. Um, she uh, motions over as you, uh, as you walk in and says, Oh, hello! Welcome to the Green Dragon. Please have a seat. Have a seat anywhere you want. I look to Alora and I say, Here, take this. And I move straight for the bar. And I say, Oh, please, please give me a drink. Anything. Your best, best. Please, please. Oh, uh, well, uh, you know, let one, one, one second. Uh, Brecca! And she turns over to the end of the bar here where a teenage girl is uh, kind of leaned up against it, seeming counting the splinters in the ceiling here. Uh, and she goes, what? She goes, we have a customer, darling, demanding uh, our, our finest drink. Get him a menu. Uh, okay. And she moves on over, and you are given a nice piece of paper. Uh, it's a bit past breakfast and lunch, so really, you just have supper. She goes, so uh, what do you want? And she goes, Brecca. Brecca, you know. Guessing you don't do breakfast. <sighs> well, I suppose we could try, but it is late in the day. And uh... Brecca goes, yes, it's very late, as in, like, supper late. And the brother turns his Brecca. And she goes, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, what I meant to say is that we don't serve breakfast anymore at the moment, as that is not the timely meal to have. You hear a scoff from the table behind you. Oh. I'll take an apple. Right. Uh, Rekko, will you hand me that? Fine. And she disappears back for a second and gives you an apple. Plants it on the desk. Mm -hmm. And then behind that, again, behind you, you hear more loudly now. Um, Betty wishes you some, some milk. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, while that, before you react to that, uh, Alora, what is, what is your plan here? So, uh, as Vale kind of hands me, like, what, whatever they were handing me, just kind of, like, tosses me some stuff, I'm gonna, um, it looks like there's an empty table, so I'm gonna move over towards the empty table and kind of have a seat away from the bar, um, sure. you can, and kind of... Uh... Like, oh, sorry, you, you should be able to around. Yeah, go for okay. it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me know if you guys can't move your tokens, because we should address that first before addressing the scene. <laughs> I can't move my token. We oh, should have addressed it. I knew it. I knew I had missed something. Controlled by... I'm going to end just... up being the pain in the butt here. No, I, I hadn't done it for you. I don't know Better if I've done it for anybody. Better now than never. Yeah, I so, cannot move my token either. <laughs> so, so far, a couple players can't control tokens, but I can control everyone's token. I've, I've marked some as uh, controls by determined by character saying. So beyond that, you should be able to control everybody's tokens. I don't know why your tokens are now I can. weird. Okay. Yes, okay. so I've marked it anyone control now. So, okay, so... Yeah, you can move yourself over. So, to your north, there are two old men sitting and seem to be staring at um, Veiled Starry Water and giggling amongst themselves. Uh, and then behind you, you see a dwarf and his younger daughter uh, on a table counting coin. And then beyond that, there is a what looks to be a passed out uh, drunk man. <laughs> old man. Okay. So as I'm kind of looking around, um, I'm going to stop trying to move my token and focus on playing instead. I'll let you guys move me. I was trying to be helpful, and now I think I just doubled oh, my token. Don't worry. I don't <laughs> okay. see any doubles just yet, so. Okay. Okay. I'm not touching it anymore. Um, <laughs> So as I'm like kind of like looking around, uh, can I just do a perception check to see like if any of them are, do they look as if they're kind of targeting veiled or if there's like, do I need to like be in protection mode or are they just kind of like laughing and joking? 
Do uh, they yeah. seem like aggressive, I guess? Uh, make me, yeah, make me an insight check. Okay. First roll. Alright, I'll take it. Hang on. Sure. I'm gonna count with my fingers too, you guys are gonna see that. So oh. the 12 total. <laughs> 12? Okay. It's pretty yeah. clear that uh, at the very least, they are just targeting with ribs and seem to be assholes. Okay. All right. So they seem to I'll be just it, um. So I'll just keep my eye on them a little bit and just kind of like look through some of the stuff Vale gave me. Try to maybe signal over the waitress to order. Oh, and, and um, she'll, she'll sure say, oh, 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 Brecca, Brecca, uh, go, go get her. <laughs> Fine, and she comes over, and she's um, about to say something, and you hear her mother kind of clear her throat behind her. What will you be having? <laughs> and I'll kind of like look around, and I'll say, "I I read applesauce. Is that right?" Yes, we smashed the apples to the best of our ability. Great, great. Can I have mine extra mashed? I can check if we can do that for you. And that I'll would be, be amazing. Right back. And she she turns, and all, all you can really hear from the from the back is there's just not any kind of bard playing or anything in here. Dad, can we mash the apples extra? What? <laughs> is that a thing? Is that a thing in the big cities now? <laughs> Uh, but at this moment, let's see, uh, Belina, are you still in your cups? That? Am I still in my cups? Yeah, are you yeah. still drinking? Yes. I am still drinking. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so we'll just have Crover come in the door, and I'll make sure you can control your token just <laughs> <laughs> before that becomes an issue again. Okay, so you yeah, should have control of it. Go. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so you enter the room however you like. And, uh... Oh, oh, it's hiked down the mountain. Longer and longer each time I go. Oh, hello, Master Dwarf. Uh, please, take a seat. Take a seat anywhere you want. Oh, oh well, please. We're... I'll uh, be definitely needing that seat very soon. Uh, uh, and I'll be needing some, some food and drink soon if you can. Of, of course. Uh, well... We have our, our waitress uh, a bit tied up at the moment, I believe, with some kind of applesauce-related uh, incident. Uh, what can I, what can I get you? And she'll also hand you, uh, she'll get the paper menu and hand it over to you. It appears they have one. Very proud of it. Yeah, yeah. Take a look. Yeah. Is, it, is it laminated? And no, but it is written in ink, <laughs> and it's definitely the least smudged and grody thing in this place. Uh, I'll be needing one of your uh, potato dishes, please. Uh, mine haven't right. been growing too great this season. Uh, anything, anything to drink? And I'm, I'm sorry about your crops. That's it's a terrible situation right now with everything as it is. Oh, it happens. And uh, Brecca will come around with what is essentially near liquid uh, applesauce. Um, yeah, here, here you go. Enjoy. Should go back to her spot. <laughs> I'm gonna burn. loudly just start slurping it. Yeah, the two of them will look at you. Well, the two older men to your north will kind of like now stop giggling to each other and like lean around and look at you oddly. I'm gonna like purposefully just let a little bit come out of the side of my mouth. I kind of give you a <laughs> typical. <laughs> <laughs> does does Crowbeer come over and sit next it's, to yeah, I come, that, That's what Crowbeer I, I come over and I say, ah, seat taken? Ah, guess it doesn't matter, old fella. Take a seat while he's passed out in the chair. Yeah, you can see in front of him there's like a, a, a few, more than a few like littered, empty, and maybe some overturned cups and an empty like flagon of ale as well just kind of sitting in the middle of the table poor fella must be having a rough day or a year at that point 
and uh, yeah, I'll be waiting for my potatoes. Right, uh, and in that moment, uh, we, um, uh, Giselle will come over to you, Belina, and say, um, is there anything else I can get you, miss? I know you've had some already, but we'd be happy to open up another for you. Can you use some more turnips, please? Turnips. Yes. Turnips, right. Okay, I will be right back with that. And, uh, as she goes back, she comes back carrying potatoes to Crover, um, but hands them off to uh, Brecca on the way over, and she kind of puts the potatoes down to you, say, your potatoes, sir. Enjoy your food. It is hopefully delicious. <laughs> as, uh, as Brecca comes over and delivers that, uh, Bernard's going to stir a bit and... <laughs> And uh, kind of start up and glare at uh, Crovier. Just give, oh, him a, give him a mad dog look. Uh, oh, thank God he's alive. I thought we'd have to clear another one out of here. <laughs> our spot. Uh, shut your trap, Brecca. Yeah, well, you were about to shut your trap for a long fucking time. Old time. And you hear from behind the counter, Brecca, language. <laughs> uh, uh, Brecca. Uh, uh, and he pulls out. He like pulls out a coin purse, like looks in it, and slowly like looks up at her and pulls out a single gold coin and throws it at her. She seems uh, to somehow catch that. Uh, give me a, a corn pone and a, a an ale. Another ale, shocking. I will I will be sure to report this to the authorities. Hey, hey, hey. Watch your lip. Watch your lip. I have many years on you, little one. Yeah, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> uh, and she will go back here and uh, return with your turn up, Belina. Yes, miss, here you go. Just make sure you don't end up like that one on the end there. And Pretty she'll close. give you. <laughs> Oh, yes, that one? Oh, and she turns her shoulder and looks over. I like mm. what he's having, please. He looks like he's having a really good time getting numb. <laughs> <laughs> and, she's like, and she takes a bite of her tunic with her hands. <laughs> you look over and he's just like, like looking down at his tunic and like w wiping like a nondescript substance off and just like... <laughs> yeah, he looks, he looks like he's having fun. So whatever he's having, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, she'll take a note of that, but as you say that, the old man in the back corner here will say, Oh, great, just what we need, another drunk former hero. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. um, Veiled is going to take a bite out of his apple, turn around, whistle over to the men, and say, One of two things. Firstly, joke's on you. I'm allergic to milk. Secondly, and he walks over to the table and puts the half-eaten apple right in the middle between them and says, if you like what you see, paint a portrait. It'll last longer. And goes to sit with Alora. Uh, Yeah, so as you do that, I'm not even going to have your own intimidate. These guys are very much uh, stunned by what you say. Though, as I should mention that as you say, you're allergic to milk. It, a smile kind of almost cracks on their faces, uh, but but then you get up and they kind of like earn a moment where they think something might happen. So yeah, you, you've effectively shot them up and you've returned to your seat. Or a seat. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yes, the chat did the mic drop. Uh, so, as everyone is getting <laughs> different levels of inebriated, fed, um, <laughs> uh, veiled as a note, you will have 44 pocket healing for whenever you need it from chat. Ooh. See, I told you, good things come from chat, man. Actually, I didn't say that. I said chat, give it. Chat. <laughs> chat will take it away. And chat take it away. <laughs> but... But, 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 at this moment, 
the front door is kicked in, or rather opened with a shoulder, as a burly man with a bloody hammer at one hand comes in and kind of blankly stares in the room. And from behind the kitchen, you see uh, a black-haired man, uh, a bit stockier than his, than his wife, uh, come from behind, and everyone kind of stands in silence as he stands. He goes, "They, they got her." They, they, they took me mum and he, he doesn't say anything and he just kind of drops to his knees and uh, so Giselle and her what you would uh, well at the moment all you understand is probably the cook but potentially your husband given that uh, her daughter seems to be working here uh, come to comfort him and like, oh, no, 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 just, just explain. What happened? What happened? What happened? He goes, I, I, I came, I wasn't paying no attention, wasn't paying no mind, was just working away, and then, then, then they took her, and I, I got one, bashed one's little head, in. But, they, but they got her, and I need to go get her back, and I, 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 can't he do it on me own? What happened? Uh, yeah. Hear, oh. Hearing this, uh, Belina would get up and wander over. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I just don't mean no troubled outsiders, but goblins took me mum. Right out of my own home. It's. It ain't right. But. The fucking goblins again. They be running around our towns. <laughs> Suppose your streets be true, Master Dwarf. But these ones, they just took me bum and left. Right into the. Right into the, the wilderness there. Now, you. To be clear here. It is, uh, just the goblins themselves, or... I didn't, I didn't get too good a look at them, sirs. Only one came for me. I fought them off, and next thing I know, I headed, and she's gone. Why would they take your mother? I don't know. And he starts kind of crying more openly now. I just know I need to go get him, and I was hoping someone would... I could rally the, uh, the town, or the, 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 uh, and, and uh, you see, kind of, they begin coming. No, 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 it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll contact the guard, and then we'll, we'll get someone out here. Some soldiers will come. The soldiers will be too late. What There'll you be... daft? Contact the guard? You don't think they give a fucking piss about this town? I, I turn to the to Crowbeer and look down at him. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we need to do something about this. Oh, I guess there's a possibility we can do something about it, but, uh, good sir, uh, <laughs> what you got going here? <laughs> what do you, what do you mean? Well, you come in here, you have a job to present to everybody. I, I can't even offer you any money. I, I, I've been saving up for a tax to pay my taxes. I've been raising it for a year. And I, 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 could, I could work on something for you, I suppose. Or we, we could round some gold up around the town if people are willing. And, and, and the, the, the two people say, and if you, uh, and, 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 and Giselle and, and Gowan, the, the, the man and woman there, uh, kind of scowl at you as you say this. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll work something out together. We'll, we'll, if we'll contact the guard because they'll do what's right. They'll respond to a threat even when asked to. All right. Then, as as they say, as as they go about that weak things, I have projects to do. I'll bring back your mum. You'll come help me up in the hills. I I could, I I can I can I can, I can do that. Just. If I, I hate to ask so much of you. 
the price we all pay. We all got that taxes here and there. <laughs> Is anyone else? Would here? this conversation have been? Would oh, this conversation this... have been um, perceivable? Oh, very oh, perceivable. Are. This is... We shall. It might not seem, but this is a very uh, vocal uh, yeah. conversation. We're not controlling it. I veiled would lean over to Alora and say, Goblins, people, you know we need to help. I mean, I'm always down to help, but do we have to cut off their ears? Did you see all the signs? Isn't that the ears? For a bit of extra coin? <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, I'll let you do that part. <laughs> and we'll, um, I'll mosey on up to little group they're gathering in the front. We're not not saying anything, just moseying up as a fine interest. Question. Do yes. You know? Yes. <clears throat> yes. So Bernard, during the commotion, has been slowly making his way, trying to be unseen, towards the back of the bar. <laughs> He's realized his chance, and he is trying to pounce on it. <laughs> yes, make me a stealth check. Amazing, okay. and I, I am so glad oh, I, I'm so glad I get to introduce this now, because... Holy shit. Come on. Oh, damn it. <laughs> can I, really so, quickly before you do that, can I see it? Can Since I'm like right there, am I noticing him moving towards me? I, I think, um, so I rolled a five. Yeah, you <laughs> definitely see him. Um, Everyone sees him. <laughs> Everybody sees you. He's, like, he's just like prancing. And to note, he's wearing chain mail. So it's just like, Everyone hears a tss, 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 tss. Yeah. And, and he has like he has like his shield like attached to his belt, so that's banging against it too. Like he's just a one man band right now. And so yes, you could like you see him <laughs> when he gets up from the table. <laughs> like, as you kind of get up, everyone looks at him like, oh, the drunk will do something, and they just see you slowly moving towards the bar. <laughs> Okay, like, is your is uh is your token where you would be? Cuz I'm going to walk over to you and like kind of set my hand like on your shoulder and I'm going to say I'll do the best I can to help you. But you're going to need to be a little bit quieter and cast guidance so that he can try to if he wants to try to keep going, he can try to figure out a different way. So you yes, I would tight. like I would like to re-roll stealth while everyone is looking at me. Yep. <laughs> Go I, like, for it. I get touched over. <gasps> okay. And I like dive behind the uh, the bench here. With a heavy clang of metal, you do so. <laughs> and let's let's see what my renewed stealth rolls are. And then you get to add a D4 to that with the guidance. Oh, oh thank okay. goodness. Um so that's a two. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, bro, add the d4, you never know. Oh, hey, never hey, hold know. on. Hold on, hold on. And that's a three. <laughs> <laughs> right, you kind of... <laughs> your sword kind of... <laughs> <laughs> and I get, to, I get to about right here, and I, lo and... I like, stop and look and see everybody, and I'm like... <sighs> and I start walking towards the curb. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the show. Anyone else want to step up? <laughs> Quite the interesting. You're all looking for the tax payment, too. I want uh, to help this man out. He's lost his mom. How would you feel if you lost your mom and nobody helped you? <laughs> Been there, done that. Oh, that's terrible. I'm so sorry. And I put my hand on your shoulder and pat you. <laughs> that happens a couple hundred years ago. Yeah. Is what it is. Indeed, but we must help him, poor thing. I look around and I see, I see, uh, sorry. And I, I, um, say, I, I like your attitude, by the way. That's very inspiring. <laughs> he just looks at you very intently. You don't know if he's lost in thought or if he 
he's like there for your soul. After about a few seconds of silence, he says, what attitude? Not knowing what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, the way that you talk to those guys that are laughing the whole time, I thought they were really annoying. And you just went up to them and went sassy. Oh, oh them? Yes. Who cares? <laughs> well, I like it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Kind of a little, little blush, his, his tail <laughs> bouncing around. Oh, whoa. Well. Yeah. Ooh, woo status. But right. then Belina's tears have dried up a bit. So. She's still watching, though. <laughs> right. So, you guys, uh, he'll say, I can, I can uh, help you as much as I can. I, they, they came to my house, so maybe you could track them from there or do something of the sort. Seems. Where is it? Yeah. Seems we could use the resource like that. Right. I, 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 you can. I, I bash. I get. I, I bash your head in as he holds up the. You know, it's a it's a blacksmithing hammer. It's very blunt, but it's covered in blood and viscous, and it's kind of getting on the floor. Which, you know, uh, the owners look concerned for him, but also are kind of like every once in a while, like glancing down at the floor, like, we, and then looking at you, like, can, can you get him out of here? you maybe like hurry this along um and, and he's like i could i could bring it right to me i don't know if you can do the sort of thing i hear adventurers can talk to dead spirits and make them do their bidding and and do all sorts of things here are mentionables but i'm hoping you don't do that to them unless you do it to the goblins then, then it's okay <laughs> as far as i'm concerned <laughs> all right well, looks like we're making a sloppy mess here. Might as well make our way out and uh, let's kill yeah. some goblins. Can you lead us to where you where your home uh, is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fo follow me, and he will lead you to his uh, small smithy uh, just on the outskirts of Valaine, uh, rather uh, beyond the meager walls here, and uh, kind of on the edge of the initial. Uh, like right about where the farmlands end. It, as you go about, you enter the kind of open area of his blacksmithy. Uh, a lot of farming equipment, uh, mostly sheds, um, one or two swords, you would guess just for show or perhaps pride in being able to make them. Uh, but you also find a dead goblin with its head caved right in. Uh, so here's where I, I cut the buggers and then round the back of the house here and you got uh, the, the week that you can start tracking where they go they got it, i suppose because that's i think where they got in <clears throat> hmm. uh, bernard goes up to the goblin uh, and just kind of kicks it for a second uh, is it uh is it dead you can make me a medicine check he says, I, I, I polished its brains in real good, so I'd hope so. Unless it's, it's one of those <laughs> ghost uh, goblins. Thirteen. Yeah, you're pretty sure it's dead. It is lacking several parts of what most would consider a head. Uh, Bernard walks over to Crovier. Hey, shorty, come here ah, a sec. Drunk, what you want? Oh, we have pet names already. I like that. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, 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 shut up. Yeah, come here. And he, like, walks up to you and puts his hand on your head to, like, stabilize himself. And he leans and puts his weight on you. And he puts his hand on his back and, like, bends his, bends his back forward. And you hear so many pops. Just... Just all throughout his back. Oh... That's much better. Okay. Is that all you needed me for? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to help me look for these little buggers? I can still yeah, smell them. Yeah, still... let's continue. <laughs> I sniff around. I don't smell anything. I. You're still a little sapling, boy. You need to train that nose of yours. Can someone look for tracks? 
I, I indeed. I'm not really good at it, so someone else, please. I, I really can't tell a difference here. I'm looking down at the ground. <laughs> Who wants to give me a hand in this? Who's good at this? I mean, um, is it nature, or is it? Are, are we doing like a survival of nature? Whatever you, whatever you think you might need to roll. I'm, I'm kind of looking for a little survival-y. Survival. Like, looking for tracks, looking for leftover stuff. Sure. Uh, you guys can explain to me what you want to roll, and then roll it. Sure. Does anyone want to assist? I'll assist. Cool, cool. All right. Um, Tolden, uh, squashed apples. Let's, uh, get our, get our move on. Neat. So Let's that's that going to be a number that is around 24. <laughs> okay. For survival. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you make your way back to around of the house, and you can clearly see you're, you're not so much concerned with the, the state of the window, but rather the grass. It's clear that someone uh, was dragged by lar smaller humanoids through this kind of overgrown grass, wild grass field. Uh, and headed towards, in the distance, seems to be the woods. Aye, aye. With, uh, what I'm looking at here, it looks like we've got some small little buggers. They made their way around. <clears throat> but, uh, as I, as I kind of also am looking around, I'm going to kind of try and pay close attention to see if there are, um, any signs of larger creatures, larger tracks that may come up as well. Um, this may be like a, f a in, in, in the future kind of thing, but uh, I'm assuming the vicinity is just goblin tracks. Uh, at the moment, yes. The only larger thing, of course, is the, uh, looks to be the you dragging. Know, lower half of a human, the dragging of a, uh, a larger humanoid. Okay. So around the back, fellas, it looks like the dragging goes up this way. Hmm. Well, let's, let's follow it. The sooner we can get to his mother, the better. Uh, yeah, he says to remind you, I'll, I'll be here in case they come back. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> typically, typically for these kinds of uh, missions, the, the, the period is half a day to two days. You, I think your mother will be fine. You just you be careful now. I did, they took her into the boar wood. I don't want them. I don't know what they're going to do to her. I'll make sure that she's okay. I just don't want them to turn it into anything unnatural. We'll do our best. I'll turn and walk away, and as I look to Alora, I'll say, I'm full of shit. I think she only has about an hour to go. We should get to move on. Yeah. Jesus. Um, as, as he passes the blacksmith, Bernard goes. He, like, is, like, riding his equipment, getting ready to move out. Uh, don't worry, son. Uh, typically... Goblins don't really dabble in uh, magic, but uh, if you're worried about her changing, don't worry. They'll probably just eat her instead. Uh, he kind of just collapses <laughs> onto his knees and starts sobbing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> following Bernard's lead, um, passing the blacksmith, hearing this, Veiled will say... <laughs> Veiled will say... Uh... Yes, they don't practice magic. And then walks away, looks back, or do they? <laughs> we're all animals. We're, we're all terrible. And I, as I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just kind of like holding one of these faces, and the color has kind of come out of my face, a little bit more pale than normal. And I'm like, guys, I need to get away from this goblin. <clears throat> and I'm just going to puke into my hand and just kind of like kick it out. I'm like, Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. And oh, like walk away. <laughs> 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 Thank goodness. Uh, Lady Billionaire, are you doing anything? Or I am. I'm like starting forward. I said, like, let's go. Let's get a move on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that's fair. Thank yeah. you for thinking you're not hurting him. <laughs> what a group. It's <laughs> 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 already great. We're, I love it. We're, ho we're horrible people. <laughs> I was concerned there'd be some moral <laughs> conflicts, but I'm glad we all decided we're all going to be horrible today. Yeah, anyway. Kalina like, was like, no, we're going to make sure we find your mom. Don't listen to them. Horrible, but with hearts of gold. 
At least I hey. tried to lie to make things better. Well, we'll see. Okay. You, you tried, Clovier. <laughs> now, let's go. Now, okay. You guys begin making your way across this field. Tracking them is easy enough. It is a very clear drag through. It must have recently rained because there is just a mud path leading into this overgrown woods. Once you do enter, however, the... I was about to say the vibe changes, but no. Uh... We get a vibe check. <laughs> <laughs> we get a vibe check. The vibe is downright dank. Not 20. Mysterious. Four. Yeah. My vibe is four. You get the sense that this forest is kind of, you know, other places in the forest. Oh, we'll hunt in here. We'll, like, gather berries. You get a sense no one is in here usually. And it seems the blacksmith was a bit afraid of this place. Um, but you begin to make your way through. Uh, the overgrowth is making it a bit harder, so I'm going to need whoever is in the lead to make another survival check to continue tracking. Sure. Am I allowed to be assisted with this, or is this a solo thing? Uh, well, we can even say community of a, uh, together as a group. Cumulatively. As a group. You can, everyone can make me a survival check, and we'll just do this as a group check. Everyone keeping each other on pace. Okay. Um, I, I think Bernard would be more, like, not necessarily looking, just following the group, but more kind of paying attention to the sounds of animals, the sounds of birds, and uh, like keeping an eye out for enemies more than trying to track. Very fair. Very fair. Uh, so you can make a good perception check if you like. Yes, sir. I have a uh, dirty, tr dirty 20 for tracking the weirdo forest. Okay, I see an 11. What did everyone else get? I got an 18. Uh, uh, I want to be like walking alongside Clovier because I'm like I'm marching forward. Yes, know? you have a mission. <laughs> yeah, I have You're going to be the only <laughs> decent person here. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Alora is decent. She just puked. Okay. <laughs> Puking. Alora, what, what is decent? Uh, got it. What did you get, by the way? I got a 10 on survival. Okay. So, uh, you and Vale, they're kind of in the back and you're following along and both of you are like, yes, that this is the this is the trail, but then there comes a point where the track has kind of become less obvious as they kind of hop over a large route, and you're convinced for a moment that it's going in the right, and you kind of both of you together kind of venture off about 15 feet from the rest of the group before realizing, oh, oh no, we're, we're why is everyone else going that way? Uh, and you realize you're kind of just standing in the middle of nowhere. Uh, no, let's you quickly rejoin it. Okay. I was gonna say, Unless you don't want to. With my perception, could I see that? Yes, with your perception, you guys aren't. It's not like dark at all. You're you're separated now. Ha! Huh? You fall into my trap. Oh, what, no. what time of what time of day is it? It is it is it is growing dark. However. Okay, I'm gonna strike a uh, a little kind of flint off my shield and light a torch. Yes. So obviously, as the night goes on, uh, you can push through. It has been a full day of traveling for you all, so pushing through might incur. A level of exhaustion uh, as a note um so you do feel that as the you guys continue to travel through carefully especially with the the over over 20 uh or rather the 20 uh, survival check and the 18 as well uh you can kind of follow along uh, the tracks are not hidden they're not really doing their best to do anything but carry their quarry uh, though you do make your way uh, along this path to a point where the sun is going is, is about to set the last rays of light are piercing through the canopy of the trees and uh, you get the sense that uh, night is moments away I veiled will um cast uh, his cantrip message to Crowbear in the front um, from his position in the back and say, little man, it's me, Kitty. Uh, will we be stopping for treats, for supplements, for rest anytime soon? Uh, you can reply to this message. Thank you. Bye. 
Let's face if it's it. getting Fuck. dark out, I uh, might be a good idea for a camp. Over. <laughs> you guys are about twenty feet apart. So. Yeah. yeah, we can Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> Worth as this, it. As this <laughs> mental exchange happens. <laughs> hey, it's actually Stumpy. a whisper exchange. Stumpy. Dwarf. What? Are we stopping? <sighs> yes, we should stop. Eventually, my bones, yes. My bones are aching. Shocking. <laughs> Right, all right, let's set up some camp. All right, uh, so you guys can make me a survival check to, uh, or survival or nature to identify, or, or based off of whatever you're doing uh, to help set up. I rolled a zero, so I'm no help at all. I got the six, essentially. I'm like, does this help? You, <laughs> you, 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 you fire? grab the end of something that you think is a stick, but then it kind of slithers out of your hand and you're like, oh, oh no. Uh, and so you go, okay, well, I'll grab some berries. And you're kind of like moving around, kind of like, oh, okay, here's some things, here's some things. And as you're grabbing them, uh, you're pretty sure these aren't poisonous, but your hands are still getting really red and splotchy. Kind of poison ivy ish. <laughs> um, so that's fun. Uh, what did everyone else get on there? <laughs> what are we eleven? Uh, okay, an eleven. Uh, failed. Uh, what is, what exactly are you going to do to help set up camp? Um, Veiled is going to. To Alora, tell her. You got this, right? Yes, cool. And take out his bedroll and just worry about himself. And only if someone needs something very specific will he get up to help. But he it looks like they got this. Perfect. Uh, so yes, you are able to kind of, you, you successfully, just with that 11, you <laughs> flick out your bedroll, put it down, and you have a lovely spot. Ah, yes. What are so we I, uh, for? Uh, survival or whoever you want to set up helps out camp. Uh, yes, sorry, I cut someone off. That's okay. So uh, I got a 16 total, and I'll just be collecting some berries and some different things to get some food to start cooking. And as like Veil goes to fall asleep, because I've kind of traveled with them for a while now. Oh, don't worry, I got it. Yeah, yeah. And then they pop their bedroll out. I'm going to kind of like brush a few leaves underneath to make it a little extra cushiony and a, you know just like extra extra go buddy i'm here <laughs> kind of that attitude yes uh and you certainly successfully do that you you're able to find some real nice like not really crunchy but like life full of, still full of life and kind of nice leaves you get them in just the right spot it's quite nice and you have some food for everybody uh all right which is definitely appreciated because someone else may be coming back with who knows what. <laughs> maybe berries, maybe um, not. <clears throat> all right, and um, for me, I rolled a 14, just looking to start a uh, just a simple fire. And um, I want to work on my brewer's kit on a, a little bit of meat I've been cooking up for a little while now. Okay, so you're able to start a, a fire easy enough. It, it's not like completely wet here, uh, and in fact, it, it is fairly uh, in this area specifically. You're able to find you know a few sticks and twigs that don't slither away from you, which is lucky because <laughs> that's very hard to cook those or rather start a fire with those types of sticks. Uh, and you kind of pick it up and then you know get it back, and easy enough, you you know start a fire uh and did i miss anybody i think Bernard, yeah. what are you doing uh i rolled a 13 survival check um he's gonna like lean down to start a fire then realize that crovier is 
already done it <laughs> just very quickly uh so he's gonna kind of and then look up um can can we see the sky um or is it very barely the trees are kind of covering uh they kind of go up and you know kind of canopy the okay. uh, night but you can still still see a few stars um and i like <laughs> this may sound weird um how do my joints feel i'm trying to uh determine Hold. whether whether or not a storm is coming <laughs> joint roll and I, the reason I asked is because, like, I saw that's one of the things you can determine with survival, and I was like, ooh, okay. Yeah, uh, you were able to determine that, well, the creak in your bones is it's not so much that a, not a storm is coming tomorrow, but that uh, this place gives you the willies. Uh, but yeah, for the moment, you, you don't really have anything, like, heavy brewing on your, on your skeletal frame. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's good. And he'll just kind of sidle up next to Crovier, kind of look at what he's doing. What, uh, what you doing there? He's kind of like looking over over Crovier. Can you hear? What kind of new brew I've been fixing together? You uh, you like you like ale? Who doesn't? There's plenty, plenty of people that don't. I'm glad you do. You're quite the strange one here. Are you even from around here? Uh, kinda. From further south. Mm hmm. And, uh, what brings you to this town, uh, Drunken Bones? Uh, they had a job or two. Nothing too interesting. Hmm. How about you? I live in the hills that surround this area. Been here all my life. Seems nothing changes over time. Just the company around you and uh, the goings ons pass you um a reach into my back and i'll hand you a uh, a water skin so yeah he, he takes it and kind of take a try uncor uncorks it smells is it is it ale mm -hmm. oh. hey dm i don't know how the, what what these ever are what is like a brewer's check like what kind of skill would you say that is well, you'd roll with your brewer's kit, uh, with uh, adding on your brewer, your proficiency bonus, and uh, yeah, and like which skill? I'd say your wisdom skill. Wisdom skill? That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. So um, like. So uh, while you're yeah, while you're doing that, I'm just going to say, uh, Belina and Alora, you both return with your bounty of, of of herbs and berries and other things uh, in various states. I should know, Belina, as you've collected more, the uh, markings have kind of spread to your forearm. Yeah. And, uh, Alora, they are, they are definitely visible. And I'm starting to scratch. I'm like, I don't know what I walked into, but I don't understand why there's these welts on my arms. Ooh. You know what this is? I'm yeah, not down and... here. <laughs> Would I recognize it? Uh, you can make me a nature check for the exact, uh, you know, understanding of it, but. Eight total. You don't know, but that doesn't look good. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, it seems like the more I kind of like the worse it gets. And I keep scratching. <laughs> I'm gonna like Somebody pull my something. hands away. Like, just kind of like, mm, mm hmm. Uh, uh, Bernard <laughs> sees this out of the corner of his eye. And with his, with the wineskin still in his mouth, he's like, mm, and like gestures for Belina to come up to him. So I go over to him and she's like, do you know what this is? I don't know what it is. He, he just he just reaches out a hand, slaps it on your arm, and uh, dumps uh, dumps uh, five points of lay on hands to cure a disease or poison. Oh. Yeah, that will that will do it. Uh, oh my gosh, the the condition clears and the sensation of itching 
goes away, which I think we all know is the best feeling in the world. <laughs> oh my god, what are you? <laughs> he just like looks at you, side eye, takes the flagon out of his mouth. I'm a god. And he just keeps drinking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much for laying those healing hands on me. He gives you a big thumbs up. <laughs> he gives a thumbs up and plops down. What are you drinking, by the way? Can I have some of that? He, his eyes shoot from her <laughs> to Crowbeer. Uh, Mead is always better with the uh, company, they say. I mean, hasn't been proven yet, but it's what they say. And um, by the way, I rolled like a, a dirty 20 for it as like a previous wow. batch. So I'd say it's yeah. pretty, pretty good mead, I, right? I would also say that's got, I, I, you know, I don't know what kind of what kind of mead you're brewing, but it's got that nice honey natural flavors that mead is supposed to have. Yeah. It comes through just right with the alcohol, so you get the buzz but not a burn with it. So know? it's like, it's like an artisan mead. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's, you know, a small, small, uh, micro brew. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small <laughs> batch. <laughs> it's a small batch mead. It's just some the, private uh, collection stuff. Pocket shot. I kind of yeah. use my knowledge with, um, like, I, uh, I'll mix in my herbalism kit and I'll, like, mash up some stuff and I'll use some, some rare herbs I find around and I'll, I'll mix them in with it. And Belgian yeah, style. Good Very stuff. good. Yeah. So uh, I say, I kind of, Bernard hands the the, the flagon over to you. Thank you. My buzz wore off from earlier, so I need more of this. Yeah. <laughs> that starts to down it. Totally understand. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, uh, is anyone else going to do anything, or should we start to terminate watches? I say this god, not a player. Um, <laughs> before falling asleep, Veiled will. Um, his mind look over to Alora and her, uh, looking at the marks on her um, arm. Are you feeling fine? Um, is are you all good tonight? Nothing abnormal. No, no weird feelings. Who me? Yes. So so. so me, right? Yes, yes, you, Alora. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just gonna kind of say, not yet. And as I as I say that, you can kind of like see a little bit of the the marking on the side of my neck kind of like glow a little bit. So you can tell I'm kind of like anxious, but I'm okay so far. Good, so good. you would probably have noticed it. I'm going to go ask Little Man and the others if we should take watch. Um. Not good to sleep with goblins running around. Don't want them to mess with our things and so. So, if you wish to join me, please do. And I'll walk to the others. Yeah, I'll join you. Cool. I see you are all sharing drinks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mind if I. Uh... <laughs> Do you want some of this? I think I drank most of it, but here, <laughs> I pass it over to you. It, it, this one. Uh huh. It's great. You did a good job. It's delicious. What is this? What is this? Milk. <laughs> oh, that's. Mean. Why would you tarnish the name of my mead? I will remember that. <laughs> Um, all jokes aside, hmm? I think it's best that we take watch um, tonight to see that no obstacles come in our path. I can do watch. I am, I'm an elf, so I only need half the sleep that you guys need. Ooh, I'll join you. Oh, are you an elf too? You don't look like one. Whatever you want me to be, but I see well in the dark, so I presume that you and I will work well together. Oh, indeed, yes. Sounds great. <laughs> I can take first watch. Be so my guest. You law to take watch. first watch. Sounds good. 
I'm good with that. All right, then uh, the you two Lassie and Bag of Bones take second watch. I can take I can take first and second. Uh, I was po I was pointing to like uh oh. like Alora and oh, okay. Bernard as they they haven't gotten a roll yet. I'll take second. Bag of bones. Bag of bones. You heard what I said. All right, dwarf. Mm. I'm to run to PvP, but I will prepare that just in case. <laughs> right, I'll take third watch. How many watches do you think we need? Enough. I think like four. <laughs> sure. I. We can. DM, how many watches do you want us to take? However <laughs> many you guys want to take. This is. Four. I, <laughs> Forty yeah, I mean, You guys want to create some intricate system of you all getting up at different hours and signaling to each other. Every with, fifteen minutes. Yeah. Every so fifteen like minutes, <laughs> rotating. Like fifteen on, twenty-five off. And then we all rotate. No, so the first guard has to knock out the person <laughs> off after them, so they get the best. They go immediately into deep <laughs> REM, and then they'll revive them and get them up. And I don't know. You can set it up however you guys like. Yeah, I mean, like, I just figured all of us, all of us take a take a set of watches. Take a watch. Sure, yeah. I'm down for that. Works. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. With that, uh, we will begin the best part of my night. First watch, can both of you make me perception checks and both of you roll me a d12? Who are the first two rolling, rolling the perception? Oh, I believe, uh, uh, I believe Veiled and Belina took the first watch. Yeah, I rolled and a... Then... Oh, sorry, <gasps> I rolled a 17 and a two. A 17 and a 2. Uh huh. Very good, very good. Right, Let Vail. Also roll. What's the. Oh, and a perfect. D12. Okay, so perception. Ah! Nat 1, which is now a 5. Um, and D12 is a nice little 6. Yes, uh, so the two of you are staying, and, and village are looking about, staring at the fire, keeping an mm. ear out, and mm. staring at the fire, keeping an ear out, staring at the fire, and the fire's really comfy, you get really nice and warm. And but I have got this. And just, you're out. Uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Belina, you notice that your companion has fallen asleep on you, but additionally... In the darkness, as the darkness begins to set in on the wood and the quiet of the night begins... Ooh, actually, I actually have a great song for this. <laughs> um, as the quiet of the woods begins to descend on you, you realize there's not a lot of nighttime noise here. It's almost eerily quiet. And through all of that, you don't really hear much of anything about you other than the beginning of what you assume is bats flying overhead sturges perhaps but nothing coming in your direction and at the end of your watch nothing happens <laughs> okay good <laughs> the <change> was perfect <laughs> so great <laughs> I was like really nervous for a second. But... I know, right? <laughs> um, I, I was nervous. I, 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 was, I knew you. I, was, I, I knew you. Like, Did anything happen to me? <laughs> so. <laughs> so, second watch. I knew you had to watch you, girl. <laughs> second watch. Yes. So, so I need Bernard and Alora. Same thing. Perception and a D twelve. <laughs> So I want to thank the chat because it looks like somebody. Oh yes, you do have advantage on this next roll. Yeah, thank you to proper nerdy. I don't know who that is yet, but that's amazing. <sighs> that's an amazing uh... person. <laughs> so perception with advantage. You can roll the d12 with advantage too if you want. Kind of combo the 20... rolls in. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got a. Well, I'll just do the one roll. So I'll do twenty-four. 
total for the d20 roll, and then a nine on the 12. A nine? Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bernard, what you got? <laughs> you ready for this one? <laughs> I am. I am prepared. Oh, still drunk. I got a seven on the perception. Seven. Wow. And a ten on the d12. A ten. Oh boy. Okay. So, Bernard, you are. Both of you stay awake. The night and again are treated with slightly more noise than perhaps the first watch experience the fluttering of wings the shaking of trees every once in a while perhaps with the breeze perhaps with some greater weight it's impossible to tell in the near darkness a little fire providing the only light for you though it does extend a fair bit it is not all encompassing to the dark forest And in the distance, you swear you hear some tumbling of small leaves and a clacking on wood, something scraping, something getting closer. I draw my weapons. All right. Uh, Laura, I, what are you doing? I will see him draw his weapons, and I will knock a crossbow, crossbow bolt just having it at the ready just confused because i'm like i don't know what's happening but if you're doing it i'm doing it too buddy yeah, so you <laughs> rolled uh, a lot better so you can actually hear they are coming from your north um, okay so i'll kind of whisper that too then if i'm if i notice even a direction and i'll say i'm gonna back up a few feet and let our friends know we might have visitors I'm, I'm going to go stand vigil at the northern end of the camp. All right. You make your way just beside a tree, and with the light, you can barely make something out. And, Alora, as you kind of get back in the middle and are... Who, who are you going to first? I'll definitely probably go to Vale, because we've traveled together for a little bit. Okay, well, as you are shaking here, you hear a sound from the wood as... A large brush and part of the tree is struck to the side. Let me kind of move you over here. And everyone can see that? Yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, question. Yes. Uh, what are we going to do about armor? Uh, I'll, I'll assume you guys can sleep in your armor. I won't. Okay, cool. We won't do that just yet in this one shot, so... <laughs> Through the darkness, you guys see <laughs> to your north a, as it comes crashing through <laughs> a giant, a giant, real proper looking boar. And it kind of <sighs> uh, shoots this almost knocks grass and dust up onto the uh, ground and kind of lets out a. I'm not sure if a tusk is if a boar has a battle cry, but you can hear, uh, you kind of hear a kind of thing coming from it it's, uh, as it begins and looks ready to charge. And this is where I need everyone, even if you're asleep, to roll initiative. I'm going to hit the fun music. Yeah, I'm going to hit. Oh, get out of here. Oh, Dang it. I think at 22. Oh. oh, uh, you let me add a turn for you then, and you can you should be able to edit. How do you edit? Sorry. <laughs> uh, so if you go over to the turn order tracker, you go over to your your zero. Uh, you should. <laughs> I'll add it for everybody, so everyone can just add it in. So I'll, I'll do some other things myself, just because I'm faster at it. Um, seven, seven. Uh, I'm sorry, Laura. What did you get? Uh, twenty-three. It won't 20. let me add it myself. So that is fine. Yep. I'll, I'll just, I'll just handle the issues. Don't worry about that, Lady Belina. Sure. Uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two. All right. We are starting. Well, I was gonna say strong. That's. Not necessarily fair. Okay. 
So let me do this and then do this so I can just load these things up here and I'm gonna have these guys roll an ish there's more I didn't say that you heard nothing <laughs> <laughs> all right and start descending okay Alora, you are up first okay and here I'm looking so I will, they're in the north part, well, the one that I see is in the north part, right? Mm -hmm. Can I see it yet? Yes, uh, so, I, well, actually, from your perspective, I suppose you can't. Okay. Um, right, so so you can't I see that one, but you can, however, make out, well, you can hear it, I mean, you can actually like hear these things coming so you're aware they're to the north and you don't quite have a sight line on it but okay so i'm gonna step out a little bit more closer towards bernard mm -hmm. uh you should have control of your toe yeah you got it perfect okay, yeah yeah I'm gonna now you kind can of closer on that side definitely see him and i since i had already kind of pulled my crossbow out in Mm -hmm. In, to steady that ready motion, I'll just go ahead and knock a crossbow, but crossbow bolt that direction. Yep, go for it. Uh, fifteen to hit. That will hit. What? And and that's six damage total. All right, you as this thing is uh, just clearing the the boat, uh, the foliage. You kind of dart back uh, to the left of Bernard and pfft, loose one right into its front uh, front lump there, and it kind of seems to take the hit in stride. Doesn't seem immensely hurt by it, but it is a solid hit. You can see it's sunk deep into its flesh. Uh, anything else? Uh, I'm gonna kind of just move a little bit further back, probably just to finish. Was no, that might have been thirty. Probably about 30 uh, feet. I mean, we can measure it out. You still have 15 feet 15. of movement. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of scoot behind this guy over here. This tree. Don't fail. Don't run away just yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so, Lady Belina, there is commotion. Yes. And Say I, you I, guys are just prone. I, I was still awake since I don't have to sleep. Oh, perfect. Yes. And so I look up and uh, see the boar and I cast um, Blade Song. And so you start to see Belina like look like she's moving slowly across, but she's actually kind of like dancing her way over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I cast Booming Blade and I make an attack on the boar. Oh, I failed. <laughs> I did not hit. I don't think oh. a, uh, I don't think a, um, oops, sorry. Uh, uh, a six hit. <laughs> I was gonna say you never know, but no, that will, that will unfortunately, <laughs> as you kind of begin taking slow movements and infuse the magic into your sword and strike down, you find it just glancing off the side of this thing's hide as you're not able to pierce deep enough. It's got yes. a tougher skin than you imagine. Okay, anything else you'd like to do? That is all. Okay, Crowbear. Oh! What the blazes? So I, I just wake up. I'm prone right now. Is that what uh, said? Yes, at, at the moment, yes. All right, cool. I'm gonna kind of stagger to my feet and start to make my way out. I was like, oh, it's time to time to rile up these hogs, tie them and bag them. Um, can I see all of them? Or you said something about yeah, we didn't uh, know the other ones. So at the moment, there is a tree here blocking your view and a tree here blocking your view. But I think you you're on DM layer. I didn't see. Oh. No, sorry. I, I, I just, uh, I'm going into your view. It's kind of weird because everyone's dark vision is overlaid and it's all kind of making it look a little a little odd. But yeah, you, oh, okay, yeah. Never mind. You got a clear view on two of those guys. Two of them? All right, cool. So I'm going to like take two steps up because um, getting up, just, I'm a dwarf. see that one. 25 feet movement it's down to like 10. So, mm -hmm. scramble oh, up, fun. and as I'm scrambling up from my feet, I 
um, I kind of like grab my uh, some twigs and a vine, and I kind of like slap it up together a little bit. And I'm looking at those two, and I and I point out and I go, ah! and I throw a entangle on the ground a little bit behind them, so that the front edge of it catches them, but not Belina. All right, sounds good. Um, so strength fourteen saving throw from both of them. All right, sounds as, good. To me. As you're doing that, I'm also going to use my bonus action. As I do that, I'm going to kind of like rumble and tumble. And as I go, I'm going to... And I'm going to uh, turn into a, a grizzly bear. Okay. The larger of the two will succeed. However, the smaller one is entangled. Great, great. I'm going to roll in. I'm going to let's get hog tying and cooking. And then roll over and turn into a bear. And... And uh, that's me. That's the end of my turn. That's all I can do. Okay. That is good. Which brings us, of course, to Bernard. <laughs> Bernard has <laughs> been watching all of us happen and kind of just looks over at the grizzly, the brown bear, a grizzly bear next to him. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. Okay. What uh, did you drink? <laughs> what did I drink indeed? <laughs> I'm on a spiritual journey right now. Um... Uh, I believe Bernard is going to move up to the boar here and is going to cast... uh, He's going to put his shield out in front of him and a little sigil on the shield is going to glow bright red um, and flash in the boar's face. And I need you to make a wisdom save. Okay. They are famously very wise, these boars. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh, actually, they are. That's a 17. Shit. All right, <laughs> well, my, my compelled duel did not work. Um, but, wait. Okay, yeah, it's a bonus action. Uh, as he gets up there, he sees it doesn't work, and he's just going to... Shit, and he's going to take a swipe at it with his sword. Uh, please hit. Uh, 15. Uh, a 15 will hit. Yeah. Move. Move, dice. There you go. And that's going to be seven slashing damage. Oof. All right. You manage to, uh, as you kind of see your magic fade, just kind of lean in and full tilt, uh, dig your sword into this thing's hide and scrape away. Uh, It looks to be in some degree of pain. Um, And Veiled, it is now your turn. All right, cool. I'm going to see that the others are in a tussle, groan, and say, shit, grab my bow, and yell to Belina, and not little man, but big man, and say, between you, and (laughs) shoot for a 25 to hit. Uh, yeah, that will, that will, that will hit, I think. (laughs) This this war, it should, it should hit. For a, oh, sorry, it's a total of 12 damage. Yeah, okay. 12, 12, Jesus. Wait, 12. <laughs> are you, uh, sorry, I, I didn't actually get to look. What kind of rogue are you? Arcane Trickster. Hmm, okay, so you don't get the sneak attack damage on this. Oh, oh, sorry about that. No worries. I was just like 12 damage. Wow, okay. Which one did you uh, target? Uh, the one on the left here. This uh, guy? The, the, no, oh, the wait. big one. The big, oh, the big one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that gets sneak attack. 12 yeah, damage? 12. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And between the two of them, you kind of pull back, launch it perfectly as uh, as Bernard is coming down and striking, and this thing kind of reels up. You shoot it right into its nostril, uh, dealing a, a massive, well, you don't see your arrow anymore, so you assume it's somewhere deep in there. Uh, but he's still somehow up. And I don't know why these guys aren't on turn tracker, I just realized. <laughs> and I will... You... Oh, let me go ahead and do this. I will mo- mosey on up over here to end my turn. Okay. DM. Now. Yes. To make a correction, I forgot sure thing. bear's CR ratings, so I am a bear-like wolf. 
I am a wolf, <laughs> essentially, but dwarf like, bear like. Because okay. That is the limitations of my wife. Mm. Ah, mm. I see. I'm doing very the math. important. Yes. So this this big old boar is not none too pleased that it's got two people in front of him, and it just took the worst line of coke I think anyone could ever imagine. Uh, Fair. And it is going to pull back, not moving out of it, but rather try to gore uh, at uh, Bernard. And that is... Oh no. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, roll 20 hates players, because that's critical. Shit! <laughs> roll, rolling damage. 17. That's fine. As this thing, as you kind of lean into it and kind of as your kind of all, your sword kind of gets stuck for a second as you're pulling back, and it in return just crushes with its tusk right into your right into your abs, with its uh, and just cracks right through your armor, and you see as it pulls back, there's a great amount of blood just gushing all over it. I lied. It's not fine. Help. <laughs> Now, this one is going to make a strength saving throw again to get out of that entangled, hopefully. Um, I don't think it's a saving throw. It should just be a strength check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just double check it. Use Use your thing. Using this action. Strength Strength check. Okay, you're right. Uh, So either way, uh, it's not getting down there at this moment. Are you sure? So it will continue to struggle. I am positive. All right, cool, cool, cool. And just for everyone's aware, it's it's restrained, I think. So that's Mm -hmm. uh, like advantage and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is going to come and rush over here. This is so weird with everyone's overlapping dark vision. But I will make it work. Uh, and it will uh, tusk. It can't quite charge, uh, unfortunately for me, I suppose. But it will throw a tusk Lady Bellina's way. Uh, as it rushes up. Bernard's going to take his shield and kind of uh, herd Belina behind him um, and impose disadvantage on the attack. Okay, which is good, because as you do, you deflect the shield, and it, uh, with its momentum, goes careening into this tree. Which will throw a, throw a d4 damage. Yeah, it didn't like that too much, and... It's back. It's exposed to you guys. Yes. Um, thank you, and I nod at Bernard. You're such a gentleman. Sad, you guys. Gushing uh... blood. <laughs> <laughs> Gushing and blushing. Uh, in the meantime, though, it is Alora's turn. So I will um, go ahead and move a little bit outside of again. It is weird with the night vision like shifting a little bit mm-hmm. this way. And I can't measure for some reason. I'm not sure why roll 20 tonight is like hating me. It happens Can you the measure time. to the big guy? Sure thing. I'm going to, yeah. So you got, you got, uh, it looks like 25 feet. And to Bernard is how far? Well, uh, that would be also 25. 25, okay. All right, so um, I'm going to knock another bolt to go ahead and try to hit it again with my crossbow. And that was a natural 20 to hit. Hey! Do it! So, I don't use crossbows that much, so what is their damage? I'm going to have to keep looking at it. So how do you like to do it? Because, like, I do it a little bit funny. So can I just do 2d8? Yeah, you roll 2d8 and apply. Uh, okay. You can... Yeah, so you, you do your damage roll twice. Okay, so 12 total. Oof. All right. And as this thing is kind of rearing back and focusing on Bernard and Bellina, you 
pull back and rock it right into its side as you can see the kind of uh, as its uh, front leg is kind of rearing back you manage to sli slide it right in between Ooh. that and its shoulder as it kind of sticks there and it appears kind of like it's limping now it's like it's on its last three legs um, <laughs> Lady Belina it is now your turn I am going to cast Firebolt at the one that's against the tree. Uh, yeah, go for it. It's back uh, exposed, so we'll call this one advantage. Uh, 20, oh, I'll roll it. I rolled a 23, and then, uh, yeah, so 23 to hit. Yep, that will do it. And uh, the damage is... Uh, four fire damage. Uh, four, all right. So you kind of quickly summon a moat of fire and lash this thing right into its backside. You see the smell of bacon fills the air Ooh. as its uh, <laughs> hindquarters are singed. But it's still standing as it squeals in pain. Uh, Crowbar, you are a bear wolf. Step, step, step. <laughs> step. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, don't you don't you juke me with this? <laughs> okay, so I'm over here. <laughs> I was gonna move him away, but you're moving him for me. Um, all right, all right. You can take control. Yeah, I'll, I'll control it. Um, whichever one you want to do. Uh, but I'm going to uh and uh take my attack with my pack tactics with my allies around this creature. Mm. So. That's going to be favorable. 23 to hit. No, yes, that will hit. <laughs> I need you to make me a another strength saving throw, please. Okay. Rolling it now. That is an eight. All right. You are now knocked prone as oh. I bite into your hind legs for max damage of... Um, 10 piercing damage nice. and I rip at your hind leg and I pull you back as you kind of like belly out kind of like some, some big old big old chunky dogs do mm -hmm. they kind of belly out on the ground and now he's knocked prone onto the ground yes well as you're pulling you kind of feel the sinews of the leg loosen as the leg comes right off and uh, the boar giant uh, the giant boar kind of squeals in pain and then falls dead. Gnawing <laughs> on the, Big on the tenderloin that I have in my mouth. But that does bring us to Bernard. <sighs> uh, uh, Bernard closes his eyes for a second and he opens them and like they flash gold for a moment. Um, and you watch as he brings his sword back in a wide arc. Um, well, I assume that I'm close enough to hit this one here. Uh, yes, you can okay, step I, over. You can step I, over and hit him in the butt. Okay, I can't really see him, but um, uh, he brings his sword down in a wide arc, and kind of lightning starts to sparkle off of his sword. Um, and as his bonus action, cast Thundering Smite. All Thund right. Thunderous Smite, I should say. Hit him with it. And please, with it. please, p please hit. Uh, 15 to hit. And that will do it. <laughs> All right, let's do some damage. That is five slashing damage. And... Mm -hmm. Five thunder damage. <laughs> All right, your blade sinks as the uh, fire is beginning to kind of settle. You just strike right in, and the shock, with the additional force of the shock, you cleave the hindquarters off of this boar, as it also similarly just collapses to the ground. Oh, so it's dead. So <laughs> it can't succeed on a strength save. So it goes. Phew! through the air as it gets propelled from the thunder. <laughs> All right, yeah. So the both sides just shoot off in different directions. Sweet. <laughs> oh, uh, 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's my turn. Okay. Veiled, what you up to? I'm gonna move right here. And I'm going to take another shot with my bow. Let's see how this goes. I assume it worked pretty well last time. <laughs> 22 to 22 to hit will do it. Or <laughs> six piercing damage. Oof. Okay, and you launch this over as Bernard is kind of crossing over your step, kind of just as he moves by. You shoot at this thing. <laughs> Sorry. And and it graces past him into this thing's side. It is looking real hurt. It is looking real panicked. But it is his turn, and he will make one last chance at that strength check. And we'll see what happens. Twelve? That's a no. <laughs> well, he certainly he lived as he died. Stuck and smelling bacon. Uh, Elora comes to you. Um, I'm going to... First, I'm gonna kind of, like, shout to Bernard. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of like, You okay, buddy? You need anything? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna help you anyways, okay? So just, like, alright. And then as you guys kind of, like, see Alora, her hair kind of starts to blow a little bit more, and something on the side of her neck kind of starts to light up and she casts um, Healing Word as a bonus action. So it's going to send 1d4 plus 4. So do you want me to roll that or do you want yeah, to roll you, that, you, Bernard? You can... Okay. Oh, well, I guess. Let... So. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So get 7 points total back. Nice. Heck yeah. And then I'll um, go ahead and knock another bolt and roll the hit. And that's a third. No. Yeah, 13 total. 13 will hit. Oh, all right. Hey. <laughs> it is a stuck pig. <laughs> it is about to be a really stuck pig. <laughs> Don't so... stop. That's five total damage. That is the exact number we are looking for <laughs> as you <laughs> launch it straight into its cranium, clearing straight past whatever <laughs> bone it dare have in its head. And it doesn't even squeal, it just drops. And with that, we can return to the quiet of the night, the smell of bacon. Ah. Uh. To waft through the air slightly. Uh, how's how's everyone doing? Anyone else get hit? No. No. Just just me then. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bernard um, places a hand over his wound, and there's a small kind of flash, and he takes it away, and all, and it's completely gone using the rest of my lay on hands. All right. I'll move you guys back to this forest map as we transition back to our small camping. All right. Oh, oh so are you going to do anything? <laughs> I'm going to um, walk around and just grab my bolt. Yes, you can recover your ammunition easily enough. Uh, yeah. let's... Bernard's going to like carve off some hunks of meat and cook them. <laughs> yeah, make me a make me a survival check for. I mean, it would be a waste if we didn't, right? Perfectly good bacon. So you said survival. Ooh, God. It's, it's kind of the cooking. <gasps> Unless you have chef's tools. Dirty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, okay. the smell of of roast cracklings was was prevalent before. Now. This pork is wafting through the air. The fact that you are not abated by some large predator is frankly a, a <laughs> mystery, but for a moment, the, the group is eating very well.
Does anybody no. have any sauce to go with this pig? The fat just enough for you? I do the, <laughs> I do the dog look thing. Oh, you haven't changed back. Are you still the wolf? <laughs> I still have the leg in my mouth, too. Wolf, wolf I, bear man. man I, I, I <laughs> kind of walk over and I, I put the leg on someone to cook it for me. <laughs> I, I totally do that, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Alright, so I roast it for you. <laughs> I toss it over to you. Do you catch it? <laughs> I go to town on that leg. Ah, uh, good doggy. Staying in this for another, like, 40 minutes. Right. So, uh, with that, the... Um, the uh, second watch is technically ended, I suppose, if you want to call it that. Oh, you know what? It does say right here in my inventory, barbecue sauce. So, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah I was going to say, ah, roll, roll, yes. for, roll for seasonings. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Where Where is it? Do it. Do it. I got, got an 18, up. so that's really good. I got enough sauce on it. Yep. It's it's some good eatings. Mm -hmm. You taste that. <laughs> it is it is juicy. It is it is the right amount of spice. That flavor complexity. I, I pour some of the Belgian ale, ale in there, too, as I'm mm. cooking. Oh, yeah. So it's oh, it's yeah. got, like, a nice, full flavor. Yeah. He drinks up all that smoke real good. You know, it's good that there's that balance of a fattiness and then the toughness of the skin. And, you know, the athleticness of a, of a killing machine as large as that just, really soaks in the flavor. Just falls off the bone. Mm. Uh, and I think with that, as the everyone settles in for some delicious meal and some good eats, uh... We are going to call our first break as the night passes. Whoop, whoop. Can we full, can we long rest? Yes, you will effectively have long rested. Thank, thank God. <laughs> well, I I guess you can say with the killing of those pigs. Da, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> for, for the moment, funny. okay. The moment. No, not yet. You save that. You save that. Too though. Soon. You hold on to that. Too soon. <laughs> Inter <laughs> innervation right now. I'll... <laughs> I'll think about this between the break if someone uh, <laughs> smells anything, you know? All right. And we are back, Libraruski. Sorry about that. A little bit of technical difficulties <laughs> on my end. But thank you so much for the raid, Aruski. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. DM the Mark Knight. Thank you so much for bringing your party on. Please don't raid our castle and kill us. Please come and enjoy the mead and have a ball with us as we adventure through this forest and our benevolent DM um shows us the good good times Evelyn, wow that's first um anyway <laughs> all right uh before you the path has begun to serpentine kind of almost haphazardly uh it seems uh not so much that it's intentional almost erratic in its patterns and uh i'm sorry what did you say your role was for the survival check 23 23 yes okay so uh with that you're also able to notice that there are points where the path kind of branches out and then reconnects kind of almost like there's somewhat of a patrol perhaps or people have gone in other directions and returned perhaps a hunting party it's difficult to tell as you don't really understand what goblins really do with their free time when they're not attacking town, I suppose. Fellowship expands. Um, but, the uh, a lot of pottery. Pot uh, yeah, maybe, maybe some pottery. Maybe they get really into, you know, dramatic role playing. Uh, our modest fellowship uh, expands. You know, they all pretend we to be dragons. Are we goblins? <laughs> <laughs> we are the goblins. <laughs> Secretly goblins. Oh, always were. <laughs> <laughs> um, our modest fellowship expands. But, however, you do see the in the self. distance a clearing. Um, I can, everyone can actually make perception checks right now to better view as this Our comes. Our modest fellowship expands. Clear view. 
Perception. Twenty. Perception. Nine. Thirteen. Not great. Our modest fellowship Four. expands. <laughs> Praise the sun. Okay, uh, Veiled, you are able to you are able to more, see more clearly than the others um, that it is a kind of graveyard, a bunch of uh, a, a large variety of tombstones surrounds a kind of almost central obelisk type structure behind that is a larger uh tomb uh above ground not massive but you also see before it two goblins and failed what do your feline eyes see shh shh listen this it seems to be a graveyard with an obelisk and at the edge there are two I suggest we go about this quietly because we don't know what else we will see or is there, if that makes sense. Hmm. Quiet. I could do quiet. Ooh. <laughs> oh, we've seen all right. I think all of us have. He, like, subtly shifts and it sounds like a bag of coins falling on the ground. <laughs> Right. So if you guys are going to move closer, I am going to need stealth checks for anyone remaining at that. If not, uh, if this does get into combat, uh, you are going to be considered one, f uh, about 30 feet away from the rest of the group. How would... far are we right now from uh, the so, scene? So 30 feet from the edge of the woods. Um, and then as people move up, I will I will shift us over to the map uh, and put you guys in the right spot. I would okay, like we're... to grab my tall bag uh -huh. of bones. And say, so, oh, now hold it our horses a little bit. And um, I pull out um, in my pouch a little bit of ash from the fire that we had last night. Um, and a sprig of mistletoe. And I, uh, I kind of grind it up in my hand. Put it in a little thing. And, I, and as it goes in the air, shadows <coughs> cover us all as I cast uh, Pass Without a Trace. Mm. Thank you. Okay. We won't be tracked. We won't be heard. But you still gotta give us a little something. Don't stumble on your own feet, you little big drunk. I like the way you think, little man. <laughs> I like uh, the way you see things, you feline friend. <laughs> Are we within uh, 60 feet of the graveyard obelisk scene? Uh, yes. You are at 60 feet. Okay, um... Before we move forward, I'm just going to close. My, uh, Bernard is going to close his eyes for a moment, uh, and he opens them, and they're like faintly glowing white. Um, he's going to cast divine sense. So, can you tell me if there's any celestials, fiends, or undead within sixty feet? Uh, within sixty feet, you don't get the sense of any of those creatures, okay. but you do get the sense this is hallowed somewhat. Oh, it's almost like a, a dimming light. Good to know. Uh, but yeah, uh, can I get everyone's marching order and stealth checks as you guys, if you guys are approaching? Alright, <clears throat> so it's stealth normal, but plus 10. Uh, and I guess I'll, I'll be heading it a little bit um, with whoever wants to be heading it is with me as well. I want to be near the fire, <laughs> so maybe right. I'm like next. I will week. be second. Yeah. But I'll be behind you two. And I rolled a thirteen. Myself. A magnanimous okay. dispensation. Is that plus ten? Yes, plus ten. Oh, so, plus ten. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have twenty-nine for me. Twenty-seven for myself. Twenty-three. Okay. Nineteen. For Laura. Sorry, Bernard. Wait, what? <laughs> I think I cut you off. What was yours? I didn't. Oh, uh, 19 for Bernard. Okay. Yeah, you all. Yeah. Um, actually, I wanna... let's have some fun for me. Let's, let's, uh. He's like holding the, the chain links, like, as he's moving, just. <sighs> 
it's not the chain links that are loud, it's the breathing. Yeah. <laughs> There's only so much you can do, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> the the goblins ask each other, do you hear that? <laughs> that breathing. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead, of course. Uh, but I will move you guys over. Let me know if I got the marching order right. I hope I did. The two outskirts. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, we have goblins here and a goblin here. And y'all are up in the top right corner. What is the plan? Oh shit, I didn't think we'd make it this far. They don't seem to have noticed you. To be honest, neither did I. Um, I can turn invisible if you want me to scout. What are we looking for? We're looking for the mother, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But I don't want to split up from you guys. Well, let's say... And stage whispers. If you want to scout the head a little bit, maybe get the feeling for what's going on inside. Or not inside, just maybe get close and maybe take a peek at what's going on at like a little bit ahead of where we can't see. Uh, does anyone have any objections or do we all want to go forward together? Uh, I, w- I would prefer that we didn't get too far away from each other, but... Uh... If you want to scout ahead, then absolutely. Um, would would it be worth uh, traveling across the perimeter to get to the, and I point or I ping, to that side, so we get the jump on that goblin and hopefully get the other one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can. Sorry, I missed what you said. I'm, I didn't hear you sound weird. The sound got cut off. No, yeah. Um, I s- mentioned that we should head over to this side to get the jump on the two goblins. So we stealth across together. The- across the outer perimeter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Use the, the use the brush to get the get the jump on them. Yeah. And remember, a good idea. We'll be quiet, so nothing loud than the booming. Okay, as everyone is making their move, uh, please make me another round of stealth checks. Uh, 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 18 with the plus 10. 21. 29. Uh, 31. Thank God for the plus 10. 15? I know, right? Okay. <laughs> you guys continue to remain unseen. You can move yourselves to the, uh, the fringe uh, perimeter sure. if you want. Yes, we kind of like move ourselves over here as we like see. as we like no. go around the brush. Mm, the I figure you guys are kind of taking a uh, going through the tree lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Is there? Is it open back here too? Like, is what what kind of structure is this? I'm sorry. It's, it's kind of like a like a tomb, like you know, like a like a. I'm, I'm trying to think of the correct word, but you know, mausoleum. it's kind of like mausoleum. Yeah, like a mausoleum you. where you, where like, you, like go a mausoleum. In, you go in and you go down. Yes. Okay, so we can go around to take both the goblins at the same time. I will jump. Uh, you gotta say again? I will join whoever wishes to go to the other side. Okay, we need uh, two people that can hit harder hard and fast and uh maybe three people over here because i i got my stick i don't hit that hard i can i can stay over here okay (laughs) who would like to join uh feline friend on the other side i can all right all right, you guys can move yourselves in position, and then we will do a surprise round with everyone rolling initiative. Initiative. 
eight for me. Twelve for me. Oh. Okay, let me add. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> it's a good thing we have a surprise round. <laughs> yes, I was about to say. Alora <laughs> had a 15 initiative. Man, that's the best of a lot. <laughs> that's a roll to be proud of. All right, which means, Alora, you're up. So, noticing that we're trying to kind of be a little bit stealthy, um, she's going to kind of cough herself around this corner a little bit. Like, still kind of staying as hidden as possible, but not quite. I don't know. I can't quite place it. But, like, kind of pulling herself around the corner, and she'll cast... Um, sacred flame at that first this guy i can't for some reason my roll 20 uh top or bottom oh there it goes top there top goes. goblin yes, yes all right yes. oh by the way um as you get closer you guys oh, wait. forgot to show this to you guys show it to everybody goblins Gross. oh <laughs> you were Here. expecting something else. Gerblins. <laughs> Gerblins. Gerblins. But cast me some sacred flame. That's a so, deck save. That's uh, a deck save. Alright. Here comes my magnificent goblin deck save. Uh, 16. Oh, yeah, that saves. Alright. So Rip. that means as you kind of call down, uh, and I'm going to switch this over to combat music because stealth has ended now as you kind of call down a bolt of fire it kind of goblin looks like ah! and dives forward just in time to avoid it and i'm gonna add their turn but you still have the surprise round um and veiled it is now your go i i'm thinking to myself there must be others around and so I whisper, oh, just go to sleep, will you? And I cast sleep on um, both of them. All right. Roll me some uh, some damage rolls for health. I can't talk. Um, oh, that's a really good roll. So um, 32 whole points. All right. As you say uh that, the dust kind of covers both of them and you see they both pass out boy why couldn't you lead with that listen i don't like to use that quite often okay it doesn't always work was bloody brilliant <laughs> all right Thank everyone you. gather around we're gonna make this quick um uh yeah Bill, if that's your turn We'll just... Are we still an initiative then? We're, st we're, we're still going to technically be an initiative. All right, so we can't just... move to our turn, right? Yeah, I mean, you'll be able to get a position in, in coup de grace uh, as, as you wish. But uh, yes, anyway, uh, <laughs> Bernard, I don't know why it's still saying you're Le Cruz and Kala <laughs> initiative tracker, but mysteries are roll 20 tonight. Hey, Kitty, batter up. <laughs> I'm gonna swing, uh, kind of a a side stroke at the sleeping beauty here. Uh, I believe. Do I get advantage because it's sleeping? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's helpless. I think well, that'll that, hit. Is that auto crit if it hits? Uh, is it incapacitated? No, probably not, because it's it's probably just no. incapacitated. Yeah. Or unconscious. Is that? What does this spell say? Is it? Um... Give me a quick second here. I can look at it too. You know, I'll research it. Um... Unconscious. Oh, so unconscious? That yeah. Great. That's a critical hit. I'm sorry, Gerblin. 
<laughs> yeah, how much how much damage do you do to this guy? Just to, just in case you flub this. Uh, just in case. You never know. You could live. Uh, that is fourteen points of damage. All right. Yeah, you just kind of, or rather, side stroke straight through his head, severing oh. his neck from his body. Okay. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I kind of wanted him to live. <laughs> Uh, I'll just move on over here. If that's that fun. happens, Alora vomits again. No. Oh. oh, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Uh, which brings us. I, honestly, at this point, it it doesn't feel right to keep going, but we have to for the rules, Crover. <laughs> okay, so I can't even get there because I'm a <laughs> stubby little dwarf. So, um, I will, like, stay on the side here, and I'll just use my bonus action to, um, the quarter staff I have has, has, um, a couple of different things kind of on it. One of them is a, is another sprig of mistletoe that's right on the top. I'll kind of give it a little flick, and it'll kind of shine a little bit, and the staff will start to glow as I cast Shalale. And I'll oh. just hold it, and I'll just stay on the side, uh, ready, right. out of the, uh, just... To make sure I'm out of the sight of like um, I'm not like they can't see me, right? This is like a wall thing right here. Yeah, that is that is that you're you're right next to a door. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, Lady Belina, it is your turn. Yes. Um, I will stride over and uh, plunge my longsword into this one that's incapacitated. All right. Advantage, right? Yes. Attack with advantage. And it's a uh, automatic hit. Okay. Automatic critical if you hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I rolled a nineteen. That's both. a critical. Yeah. Well, it it is unconscious, so that's a critical. Okay. And uh, that's um, nine damage. Yeah. You similarly, uh, with a bit more grace, kind of just right through this thing's whole body, basically, as it offers yeah. no resistance, and it similarly crumbles. Mm. <clears throat> Don't forget its ears. Mm. Ah, ears. yes. Good what point. are you talking about? Point. You're going to take off the ears? You didn't see the flyers? No. <laughs> uh, Bernard, like, okay, kind of swivels swivels, and, like, reaches his arm around and pulls a flyer off of his back that was probably stuck onto him. <laughs> this one. Oh. Oh, that's terrible, and it's so inhumane. Time is money, and so are ears, so we'll get to cut them. Let's take these well, bad boys out. You can have them, I don't want them. Money, us dying. Money. money. You can have it. I'm here to, for the mother. Alright, gold splits better four ways anyway. It does. Um... <laughs> silver piece per year this this obelisk here mm -hmm. is this what i felt was desecrated uh well it's kind of this you're kind of getting a vibe of the whole area kind of almost coming up from the ground and about mm -hmm. here is is not so much desecrated consecrated but like it's fading oh, okay uh dm how tall is the mausoleum uh, it is about um, 15 feet high at its uh, highest point. It kind of, you know, tops at the top. Is it possible for me to cat claw my way up there and perceive if I see anything else that we perhaps missed? Uh, sure. Uh, you can make me an acrobatics or athletics check to climb. I do have a natural climbing speed with my claws. Does that... Um, uh, that will obviously that will uh, uh, with climbing it will allow you to get up there faster. Actually, as a climbing speed, you can just go. Yeah, totally. So yeah, you no know, roll needed. You scale this top of the top of the mausoleum and are are perched like so many comic book heroes, <laughs> overlooking the graves of the fallen. Will your struggle ever end? Uh, but you at the you can also make your perception check on it that is a 23 23 yes okay so from around uh, from your new vantage point you were able to see basically this area is cleared out it's 
quiet. You see some tracks of what look to be various goblins heading away from here. Uh, you also see the tracks you followed leading directly into this, uh, uh, into the building. And uh, beyond that, though, nothing else really catches your eye. It's all clear. So as we kind of start moving towards like going into the mausoleum, I'm definitely going to check one of the goblin bodies. Just get a little pat down, see if it's got anything good. Yeah, sure. Uh, so on it, it has a, uh, a slashy scimitar um, and a ratty short bow, as well as wearing some very cobbled together leather armor and a shield the dinky little tiny basically cooking pot shield uh tied to his side beyond that doesn't see me as much about him right. um as we go forward past that past what other trace is still up so well, right you never actually hit anybody <laughs> okay so are you opening the door uh, i would like to look Kind of just look for traps real quick. Yeah, sure, make me. Oh, it's not the same. Yeah, uh, yes. you can both make me uh, perception or investigation checks. Hmm. Not investigation. <laughs> can you do it, Mr. Cat? So, <laughs> I know. See, I know. See nothing with an eight. <laughs> Tried. So, Lucky right. number 18 for me. Bale, you do not perceive any traps. Hmm. Uh, Bernard, do you notice the door is recently been opened? Uh, and hmm. does not appear to have any traps. Okay, I just push it open then. Okay. The door, the two doors kind of part, and you see a uh, singular tomb. And a stairway down. Mm. Yeah. All right. Does it look as if it's uh, been messed with, like moved, disturbed? Uh, this tomb does appear to be cracked open. Um, all the contents are missing, aside from some bones which have been jumbled about and are out of sorts. Some are not on. Everyone, uh, how's the light level in here? Dark. Uh, obviously, light coming in uh, is sufficient, but uh, going around the stairs, you notice it is complete darkness. I'd rather not take up a hand. Uh, would, does anyone have any light, magic, or anything they can use? I do not have light. Okay. Um, I, can I kind of look around and investigate the area around, or is it just, uh, it's just there? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can make me a uh, perception or investigation check on this on this first area. It yeah, does go. Perception. The stairs do go down, but that that's a separate map. I want. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So you do notice that this is roughly sparse for a tomb. Um, it seems. Uh, from some things on the ground, there used to be some pots, maybe some pots or other offerings of sorts about, but uh, those are now missing, gone. Uh, what uh, what does remain, though, is kind of some scrawlings and, and portraits of the walls of. Uh, you, you, you see kind of like knights at attention in a guard and there there's two larger inscriptions on either side of the door but those appear to be smacked about and broken uh, and smaller ones are kind of put along the runners of the stairs by the by the way thank you for the follow platinum pelvic exam and placebo hey yeah thank you but what is the plan? Torch. 
unfortunately. Would, <laughs> would it be worth lighting a torch? I do have a torch to supplement you with. Would it be worth doing that now? Um, or tying you to one of us and leading you along until light is needed? I mean, I'd be pretty useless if... Uh, True. I can't see. It's really nice. With a lantern of sorts, we do possibly run the risk of being spotted, but... It's, I think we might as well if you cannot see. Well, to be fair, I, uh, huh, me seeing isn't going to affect my, uh, silent sneaking abilities as much as my armor. So maybe, yeah, you're right. I'm going to put the torch out, put it away. But, uh, keep the torch at the ready and just keep a hand on our shoulders. Okay. We'll guide you through, but when things start to break down, light the torch and light the area. Got it. Uh, poor humans. Uh, the lips are <laughs> short, they can't see shit. That's right. Keep going. Sorry, did you, did you want me to put my hand on your shoulder? Should I get on my knees? <laughs> If it can help you be quiet, crawl like a baby behind me. I'll lead you to, to water, baby calf. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I do need no marching order. If uh, no one opposes, I'll go ahead and lead the way. I oppose. I'll, I'll oh. grab hold of old man Bernard's hand. <laughs> I will go uh, second if... Lena's first. I will go behind whoever is leading me. <laughs> Are the stairs here? Uh, yeah, they're they're going around. Oh, okay. I will. I'll move you guys over. Yeah, cool. All right. So, pass all the trace is still up. We're going in stealthily. Let's. You want us to roll now, or? Uh, yeah. You guys can make me another stealth check. All right, sweet baby Jesus, lead me to victory. It's not what victory looks like. Oh, not 20. 29. Oh. Nice, Belina, nice. 21. 19. Okay, you're all able to, with, uh, with the cat-like tread. Thick boys are the weak links. <laughs> Make your way forward. Chain um, links. <laughs> I'm moving everyone over. Let me know. As I'm like holding Bernard's hand, I'm also trying to just hold up part of his chain mail shirt. <laughs> just to make it a, as, as a smidge quieter. Alright. Alright, what, what do we see? What do we see? What do we see, not what do you see? What? You guys oh. enter upon a quiet, but, uh, oh wait, oh, wrong music, there we go. You guys enter upon a hallway. Um, the reek, the stench down here reeks of trash and excrement and blood and in the distance, you swear you hear a soft chanting, but you can't quite tell what it is. Um, what is that in the corner? The place in the corner. That is a statue that has similarly been uh, smashed apart. And what's immediately in front of me? Is this like a picture? Oh, that is a wall sconce. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is currently extinguished. I uh, whispered to Pope, go oh, here. I think they've desecrated this tomb. Look at that statue. It's all broken. And quick addendum. Uh, shout out to Brazzleduel, played by the incredible Tony Stevens. Uh, being blind sucks, dude. Yeah, this looks a good bit of fucked up. Oh, sorry, are you moving there? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to look at the statue. 
Okay, so, oh, sorry, you're going there. All right, let me just make sure. All right, as you do, you are going to be, uh, hmm. Make me one, make me another stealth check. Uh, 28. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. You're able to investigate the statue without anyone spotting you. Um, you see that this is a knight similar to the ones engraved uh, by the sides of the door. Um, this one appeared to have a hammer of sorts, or perhaps some other kind of weapon. It's hard to tell as it's whatever it was holding was smashed and its head was attempted to be caved in. It's been marked all over with something. It is unclear. But not a uh, not a statuesque figure. Rather, the remnants of one are before you. I hold up my hand and I point like like this, and I motion towards down the hall. I'm gonna let off another divine sense. All right. Um, does that have an auditory component or a verbal component? It does not. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes, uh, again, you get the sense now that you feel more in the heart of it that okay. this is a consecrated area but is fading. Like a, a light dimming that it's on its almost last legs. There's, a, there's an enchantment on this place that makes it holy in nature, but it is, it is dwindling. I fear that we should probably you, you get, see, get, get a move on. Melina keeps making motions like, like this. Like. I, I can't see. I can't see you. If that, can, right. I, can I take a, a peek around the corner? Melina's yeah, pointing of very uh, feverishly to it. Take a, so, like, take a peek. I'm yeah. also going to whisper, uh, Bernard, let go of my hand. He's walking around somewhere. Keep your eyes on him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Which I will do. <laughs> All right, everyone, just keep your eyes on the old man. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have, Guys, I have, granddad got away again. I have They're my long here. sword out. I have my long sword out, and I'm just using it as a cane, just like swinging it back and forth. <laughs> you feel a very soft furry paw grip you. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up. <Stop. laughs> So what do I see exactly when I peek around the corner? You see, well, let me see what you see. Do you you see spot a I goblin see? laying about on what appears to be a giant pile of trash. Another seeming to, you know, you can't quite tell. It's kind of behind the pile of trash, but it seems to be crouched over doing something. And you feel like you see the hint of another goblin can't be sure though you don't know how large the room is okay um a large brazier in the middle of the room i'm gonna look at the does does this does this guy have cover at all uh this one light amount of cover um like that would affect me throwing something at him attacking not wise? not re not at the moment he okay. is sleeping on a pile of trash it's kind of like the trash goblin. So basically, what I'm asking if I if I make a ranged spell attack, will it be at disadvantage? Not at this. Not for that guy, no. Okay. Um, I look back to the guys. And I say, "All right, I want to take a step back. I'll toss something at them. Maybe they'll come in. They'll funnel in." Yeah. No. <gasps> Are there more? Yeah. I got a magic missile. Well, the the other two from earlier were very easy to take down, but I think it would be good to draw them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll funnel them in, maybe. Okay, can I? Can I? Agreed. Belina, it, it, what I'm gonna do doesn't cost such a resource. Okay. Maybe save save your resource for for later. Okay. Okay, so I want to cast um, Magic Stone, basically. Um, okay. Three, three little stones that I can toss toss one at them. Um, this is just a normal like spell. Uh, just making sure that uh, Belina knows to take a step back. Someone give me enough room so I can take a step back right after I toss it. Um, 
<clears throat> what are we doing? I'm just gonna grab uh, Grandpa's hand and I'm gonna say, <laughs> just uh, here in a few minutes we might need you to light that torch, buddy. Okay, all right. Okay. He like fumbles for the torch and gets it ready. So, um, normal roll. Yep. Roll for it. Okay. It's cocked. Hold on. Ah. Um, a likely story. <laughs> and that will be a range spell attack of 16. 16. That will hit. Great. So that's going to be <laughs> six points of magic stone damage to the back of his head. Six. It. You see as it whips and just collides the same as it kind of tumbles off the side of the trash and then it kind of looks at the others and they hear shouting and goblin before uh, they kind of look in the direction of the stone and they start uh, well you can't quite see what they start to do but yeah because I, I, we can't see now we move back and then now I'm going to let go of the stones and I'm going to shalali my staff Okay, uh, and this is where I will have everybody. Actually, are you guys just holding ground? Yeah, I but I readying. I'm readying my swing for if something comes around the corner. Okay, as you do. Ready something? Yeah, I'm gonna I mean, firebolt if something comes around the corner. I, I guess I'm just gonna stand, stand here. <laughs> well, you're a torch guy, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna, I light, uh, should I light the torch? I'm gonna whisper. Yeah, Grandpa, go ahead, light that torch, man. Wait, six okay. more seconds. Uh, <laughs> Very specific. One, and two, we're gonna have this guy three, around one. the corner just oh. as the six seconds expire. Okay. Do we get to do our ready action? You can perform your ready actions on whichever ones. Uh, this one is coming to sight first. This one shortly after. Okay, so the okay. first one will we'll take a. Firebolt and a shalale to the face, I guess. If yeah, if you guys would like that, I, an eleven I, hit. I, I, okay, an eleven will not hit as you uh, kind of <laughs> fly and you assume a bit too much of the goblin stature. And it yeah. soars past into the wall above. I got another sixteen. That will again hit. And that is going to be uh, eleven points of bludgeoning oh, damage. Ooh. And you crack this guy strongly on the skull as its head splits open and falls back and... Come here, you puny fucking goblins! But here... We go... Clash Defiant and... Let's roll some initiative. Alright. Oh my god. <laughs> my initiative rolls... I know. Mine are terrible today. Mine have been terrible too. <laughs> <laughs> better, better. Mine matches yours. Mine's a seventeen as well. Nice. For Alora. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, seventeen for Alora. Uh, I think you'll automatically filter whose dex is higher. But okay, so, uh, Kroviar, what'd you get? Um, eleven. Levon. Oh, so you probably put it in chat. Did not see. And Belina got a six. It's a rough day for Belina. Probably shouldn't have had that drink. <laughs> Though, yeah, to be fair, it's also affecting our old man, so both yeah, of you probably she, shouldn't have had He's holding drink. Ben Bernard's hand, so, you know, cut her some slack. <laughs> yeah, well, he's holding you back as far as I'm concerned. Oh, nice. <laughs> Goblins go got first. Him. Wow. All right. So with that, this one is going to shout really loudly and charge in at our noble dwarf. Oh. And then something insane. Um, Take your <laughs> best shot. Bernard is going to somehow impose his shield in between giving him disadvantage. <laughs> okay, he will take a shimity shimitar attack. 
you should really turn off 3D dice, but they're just so much fun. Uh, that is a 7. No siree. Gosh dang. Not that wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and he kind of just... And, uh... Will come, it just doesn't even come close as he kind of, in his ferocity to get revenge on the person who he assumes... Well, just killed one of his friends. Uh, will come down and just a bit short. As he misses, I'll uh, say, "Ah, you look good, splattered in your friend's blood." That mm. is that is mean. <laughs> or a mean Not person. here to be nice. You daff. Okay, and I'm just gonna move this guy and somewhere else because it's he'll be a surprise tool for later. Okay, which brings us to Elora. So I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna say, uh, if everyone could just kind of like get down a little bit, and I'm just, I'm gonna cast Toll the Dead. Yep, go for it. Uh, what kind of save is that? Uh, I believe it's Wisdom. Oh, the famously strong goblin stat. <laughs> Wisdom. Eleven. Misses. So. Well, he tried. <laughs> Very wise. Is and are any of them missing? Are any of them missing hit points? Oh, this one is definitely missing hit points. Okay. Is this the one I clocked with the rock? This is the one you clocked with the rock. <laughs> oh, we're doing great with our target pri uh, priorities. So, if the target's missing any of its hit points, it takes a 1d12, and I rolled a 10. So Oof! 10 necrotic. <laughs> Alright. Mm, nice. Let's As you spread. kind of... And the sound kind of resonates, you just see the goblin kind of... As it's snarling at you, it kind of seizes up and just kind of... Eyes roll back and collapses to the floor. Dead, you monsters. Dead. <laughs> it had a family, maybe. <laughs> All right. Veiled, what are you doing? Uh, you can move through friendly companions, right, without yes. a hindrance. Yeah. Cool. I. I'm gonna move right here real quick. All right see you again that's great but you see an empty room no. as we are clear of initiative oh, no. is in the empty huh all right you're I'm all free gonna... to move about the cabin <laughs> oh, Grandpa but... his, his, uh, the torch turn on the torch oh it's on <laughs> oh nice have okay. your torch? You can drag your torch. Here, have a torch. Ooh, a torch. <laughs> Where's my torch? It's right next to your token now. <laughs> Tor I can't control the torch. Oh, you should be able to. That is Bupkis, controlled by all players. See, this is what there happens, man. This is what happens when I'm not good at roll 20 sometimes. Uh, he's going to approach the brazier and light it. Okay, I will drag another torch there. Um... Well, okay, so the large brazier actually does not have oil in it. No. <sighs> Sorry. Hmm. I have... Uh, I have a tinderbox, and so I can put some of that oil-covered cloth material in it, too, for him to light. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just... Mini fire. <laughs> that there. Ooh, Ooh very nice. Oh, what do you do? <laughs> it's moving. It's it's shrinking. So it's, it's a mini fire. What what is this? This golden plate. Ah, that is a barrel. It is covered in trash. Does it look like a barrel that might contain alcohol? Well, you've sure seen a lot of barrels. No, not in a tomb full and of trash. Most barrels you've seen contain alcohol. So Does this one look like it? 
It, it looks like a barrel. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to go up and smell it. <laughs> oh, this whole place smells like blood, shit, and trash. <laughs> Mine? All right, what's the plan? <laughs> well, you look kind of thirsty over there. Are you okay? My, my throat's a little parched, but it's it's all fine. Hmm. Are they continue on? Where did the other goblin go? Do you need water? No. <laughs> I should be fine. Do you need some of your mead, Krovir? I forget, you just sound like that. My bad. Apologies. <laughs> uh, I should note the guys want you can look around the room you're also in there's things i, I oh, wave God. the torch around looking for things okay uh well <laughs> as you as you do that you can start to see there's inscriptions on the, the walls of this room uh of, of knights uh in all in the similar armor battled against well it's difficult to tell what exactly kind of creatures they are but it is uh, it is clear that they stand together against these things and on each of these figures chests there's a similar inscription in common it reads uh, on the first one I uh, I Aurelia Valerus swear the Delian oath to serve law battle chaos and strive to keep the Delian lore secret and on the next one I uh, Gaius Gracchus, so the Delian Oath to serve law, battle chaos, and strive to keep the De Delian lore secret. And just all through this line of knights, each holding their shield and sword aloft against the, the torrent of creatures towards the uh, far side of the tomb, uh, mm. all inscribed similarly. Do I recognize... Considering the... Name? Um, you can make me a history check. Can I aid that? Uh, you, you can. You guys can all make your individual history checks if you like. Probably is not very interested in dead peoples. You just make them. 13. Seventeen total for me. Okay. So with a seventeen. Oh, is that sorry? Was that two seventeens or is that just Belinda really seventeen? Just her. Okay. Oh. So, uh, with the 17, also you as an elf, you've, you know, you've lived longer than these <laughs> other races. Uh, you would recall there were a variety of knightly orders established on the, uh, perimeter, um, of the Great Kingdom when it was once whole. Uh, though a lot of them did fall to, due to lack of interest there wasn't really any foe to fight there wasn't any great enemy to hinder and so their recruitment went down and, and perhaps they were defeated in fact entirely by their own success uh, so uh, this seems to be one of those such orders their history unknown but uh, their purpose, very clear. Keep the forces of evil and chaos at bay, protect all that is good and orderly. Well, obviously they failed at keeping this tomb safe, but I digress. Yes. Um, we'll clean it up though, I assure everybody. Uh, shall we carry on, or do you think we want to... I don't want to sort through the trash, and it seems pretty awful. The goblin was looking through that, uh, pile there. Would it be worth searching? Mm -hmm. I'm not touching it, but maybe someone you else... You guys will. hear from around the corner, Oi! Oh, you, you be low! I knew there was something bigger. Do we snuff out the flame? <laughs> that was the flame of hope. Uh, Bernard's gonna set the torch on the ground. 
Hell, you Huey, look with your fancy fires and all them lights. You best clear out here before I'll rip your skulls off and add them to me collection. <sighs> Muttering to myself, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, you fuck off. <laughs> uh, does this does this sound like someone's trying to trick us? Uh, you can make me an insight check, or gosh, if linguistics was a skill. Um, <laughs> but yeah, make me make me an insight check for the intention. If if this is like someone putting on a voice. I mean, oh, D and D Beyond just did me so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> landed on a natural 20 and then at the last second moved to a 2. <laughs> you can't say for certain whether this is in fact someone putting on a voice or in fact a very large creature, humanoid, speaking person. Uh, okay. Well, they know we're here. Well, well, well uh, li little man, is your uh, shadows Aye, uh, as long as uh, it hasn't been more than an hour, it's still up. Then I I will sneak around the corner to see if I can peek anything. Okay, uh, move yourself in five foot increments for me. Just as everyone's getting in position. Stop right there, actually. Does a... 16 hits your AC. It's on the nose. All right. As you step there, the stairway <laughs> kind of collapses under you. and Not collapses, but uh, sinks a bit under you. And a scythe kind of quickly slices uh, past the spot. And you take eight damage. At the look at my wound. Ouch! You got it right across the chest. Oh, buddy, be careful there. It doesn't look friendly. You are still activating it, so it has not gone up to reset. But you know, you know it's there. Right around the middle, the whole middle of the stairway here has basically gone under with your weight. It's been oh, so the the entire stairway. Not the entire stairway. Just just uh, let me let me draw a shape for you. Um, see if this will work. Yeah, like that part of the stairway. Um, can I? Is there any way that I can inspect the trap to see if it's possible to disarm it from where I'm standing? Sure thing. Make me a investigation check. Twenty-one. You are able to approximate that if this stair does not go up and reset, the trap will effectively be disabled, given that it has sprung into place. Okay, we all. Should, um, we, should we move forward? Let's move forward. Let's get the, the mother is probably died at this point. I, you know, I cry out. Wait, oh, you look better clear out. <laughs> I would, I would let them know that it is uh, safe for them to pass with it currently being disabled, and say while holding my wound, carry on now, carry on. Are we still on initiative or we're out of initiative? Uh, no, we're out of initiative, but if you could move in five foot increments and not, you know, just whirl yourself out to the map, that would be greatly appreciated. I will also declare usage of two D4 out of, out of my four D4. Yes, use it. Okay, so stop right there, Lady Belina. Mm -hmm. And I will need, because if uh, I'll let everyone else get into position they want to. Yeah. They are Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> I take it all back, and it's back to full health. Take a second and just focus, and you look down and... Oh, that wasn't that bad. I wonder how that happened. Yeah, kind of just cut your clothes a bit. Oh, weird. <laughs> right, so everyone get into the position they want, because 
after this, we are going to be rolling initiative. As you see a goblin with a staff whirling it about in a circle and chanting to itself. Oh. <laughs> Goblins don't do magic. You should be fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. something suspicious about this goblin. Yeah. Mm, Magic everyone, and goblins. Everybody get into position that you want, and then we will roll initiative. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? A minute. DM, can I please just ask a meta question? Of course. <laughs> okay. Can my player who is looking down this hallway clearly see the goblin who is too big to be hiding behind this pillar here. <laughs> you can make me a perception check against a stealth. <laughs> I know. Damn it, it's a nine. Nope. <laughs> you don't see it. Okay, uh, these, that pillar's these... got arms. <laughs> yeah, yes, they do. I am... <laughs> Oh my that that gosh. pillar is built. My goodness. <laughs> thick. Yeah, this is a thick ass pillar. This is a this dummy is, thick pillar. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Why do I keep rolling so bad? I know. I keep rolling bad too. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're okay, seven. <laughs> I mean. Ooh. It's contagious, I guess? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I am just waiting for you all to, yeah, just carry along. Okay, Alora, did for did you roll? Yeah, 16. 16, killing it as usual. So, let me just, uh, let me just add some initiatives here, because I need to, just the, just the one goblin needs his turn added. Uh, <laughs> hey, Kroger. EG, are you going to stay there or are you going to move up? Do I have time to move up before we do You have time to move up. Yeah, I said you guys can move into into position. Okay, we just... then I'll... I'll... Yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. They get that. Uh, let me just pull out the sheets here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be fun for me, at least. I hope it's fun for everybody else, and I hope didn't like your characters too much. I'm kidding. But that's Yo, pretty KDM. good. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I love my players. They're my favorite thing to break. Come play with us, players. You can play with us forever and ever and ever. Did you bring me a new toy? <laughs> I broke my last one. <laughs> uh, no oh, words. No. That's my God! Do down, not downtime lore. Yep. Uh, da -da, and descending, and let's hit it. Oh, so yeah. they are gonna hold their turn. Alora, you're up. So standing at the back of the hall, kind of behind everybody, I see the one behind the. Is that a white pillar? Uh, in the center, yes. or uh, so that is not a pillar. That is a kind of uh, table of sorts uh, with blood, oh. and you see the goblin kind of. Oh, no. Okay. Um. Thirty-five feet to that. So. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. You can make that. Just about. Um. So, so you can, <laughs> yeah, we can okay, 45 sorry 45 feet from you to the goblin or unless you want to move 35 feet up sorry yeah i'm gonna move for some reason roll 20 is not letting me move oh i will make sure you have control of your token again which you might not um okay you should which is odd but half movement if you want to move me Sure. Uh, so, half movement. So, fifteen or? Fifteen's good. Perfect. And then, um, on the one that I see in front of me, I'm gonna cast Bane. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> Do I see any other ones in my scope? 
Um, it does not appear you can get a clear shot or a clear line of sight on anyone else at the moment. And this is the guy you see. What about that built as fuck uh, pillar? That pillar? That pillar is not visible at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that Damn! That that coat, overcoat, hoodie thing. Whoa! It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. With, I'm a fan. Uh, with a face that looks like it pops out from the back. Wow! Rude. <laughs> so I'll cast Bane. It's charisma. Throw. Okay, a charisma saving throw. I sure do enjoy those. This, this character. Um, though that should be handy dandy for me. Nineteen. Oh, wow. wow. That definitely passes. Yes, as you kind of begin to try and focus on, you find it's difficult that this goblin is almost suffused with magical energy itself and is able to push back your bane. And then, um... Can I cast another spell as a bonus action, or no? Bonus action cantrip. Okay, never mind. I have nothing else, thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, I am sorry that didn't work. No, that's okay. I was just But... Alright. Uh, but it is now Crovier's turn. Okay, okay. So, um, based on before, I made a double oopsie. Uh, I can turn into a bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you have your you have your wild shape forms I made for you. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my action, and I'm gonna take out a golden acorn in my pouch. And I'm gonna throw it up once. I'm gonna throw it up twice. And the third time, I'm gonna snatch it and I'm gonna throw it in front of me. And the acorn's gonna go, and it's gonna turn into a small, mechanically creature, bear. It's gonna turn into a small. I'm gonna cast a summon bestial spirit, and it's coming out as like a nice spectral, like mini bear. Mm. As he lands with me, and I'll say, "All right, let's go and." Uh, attack whatever we attack with each other and i will run forward with my bonus action turn into a actual bear a black bear i think or a brown bear whichever one a brown bear i shall turn into a brown bear i gain 40 feet movement as i no. as i am now a large beast uh i will where am i um where's Where's my you bear should... token? Little man is now big man. You should be able to drag it <laughs> on, but I will make sure you have control of that since bear, that appears bear, bear. to there. Oh, there controlled is. by very big man. Oh, yeah. Boom. There you okay, go. Sh... Yep. All right, and then um, I'll get this little black bear as my other guy. Brother's Aww. bear. Now with uh, <laughs> so I can't attack. But I'm going to move into position here while. It's triggers. Yeah, trigger me. A prepared Go for it. action from a certain fellow throwing something at you. That is a 23 to hit. That hits. Okay. You take five piercing damage as a javelin what? finds itself in your side. <laughs> Oh, that was serious. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, roll 20 mechanics, minus five. There we go. All right, so the bear form takes minus five. And now for this form, he only has 30 feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's as far as he can go. He can't make um, an attack. Okay, so I should note, I'm not sure. Oh, I should give your bear vision. So you can make a, an informed decision about what you're doing. Mm. So I'm also going to give you uh, bears have dark vision, yeah? That's right. a good question. I don't believe so. I shall look. I have the stat block up. Bear 5e. Um, the brown bear? Yeah, it's a brown bear. No. Yeah. Do I gain dark vision because it's a wild shape? 
don't no. think so. Which I, it's <laughs> definitely not. That's a definite no. no. But I will also give your that token vision. But my my spectral bear does have dark vision. Yes. Oh, wait. No wonder you can't. Wait. Are they on the wrong? <laughs> does dark vision not uh like transition over? It doesn't say it does. All it's all. It... So well, you 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 retain uh you retain all of your soft stats with. Um, yeah, my mental Wild stats Street. I keep. Um, but I don't think I keep my dark vision. That doesn't Got it. fall under mental stats. All right, but as you enter this room, you see in the top right corner an old woman in a cage. And additionally, I'm not sure if you can see. Or. Uh, Wait, are these sure. lights though, or are these just cosmetic and they aren't actually there? On the corner, yeah. those are lights. Those are those are oh, lit okay. lights. Cool. So if you move your bear there, you will get an attack of opportunity. Attack of opportunity. I'm not sure if that's something. He he would be able to see the goblin. You'd be able to see the goblin if you're moving up with him. Go for it. Attack. Okay. Point of just... order. Uh, you do not retain your dark vision. Got it. All right. That's what sixteen. I yeah, that hits. He will do three slashing damage. Cool. 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 As it runs by, and he just. Rah! <laughs> All right. Yeah, say. Okay, which brings us to <laughs> the Gobbo's turn, and they will come up and attack this bear. How dare they? Not a fan of bears, man. Not a fan of the bears. What a bunch of jerks. Yeah, well. That's kind of their whole thing right now. It's their shtick. Mm -hmm. Actually, this one. St Ooh, don't want, don't want the bear. I do not want the bear. To the back with you. This one will stay right there. Uh, but these two will strike at the bear. Which one? Uh, the top one and the bottom one, right here. No, I mean which bear? This bear. Oh, uh, the big bear. So the first one is an 18. Yeah, that hits. All right, take eight slashing. Okay. Oof. The second is a critical hit. Oh. Of course. <laughs> and you will take seven slashing. Sure, sure, sure. As both of them go and uh, the first one slashes at your face and kind of cuts right across your nose the other one gets you right in the butt and you weren't expecting it either and that really stung and <laughs> slices right across you it reminds you of the boar um what is, what is this thing right here i'm sorry well uh i was gonna save it but if you insist no no it's fine. That is, ahead, no, no 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 we will show it we will show this because beside you is a larger heavily armored yet goblinoid looking creature Oh no. <laughs> these these one-liners are the best. <laughs> it's a hobgoblin. Nice. It's like who a goblin, lives, but hobbier. Who lives in a hob house down the hob street. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so these this guy is going to attack your baby bear, which is a six to hit, which I'm going to Doubt hits. But... Definitely not. <laughs> All right, good. That's good. And then this one is going to shoot a short bow at you, and that is a twenty-one. Uh, that hits. Is that against the me or the, the big baby bear? bear? Big, big yes. old bear. Okay. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. that is going to be six damage. All right. Piercing. Taking cool, cool, taking cool. these hits. Cool, 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 cool. Five health left, bear form. Good, good, good. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I gotta do all, like, concentration checks on all of these. How many times did I get hit? It's all uh, ten. Three, three times. Three so, times. All right, first, all, 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 all gotta beat ten, yeah. Alright, so, bear's constitution for this. Oh my. Lord, baby Jesus, have mercy. I already failed on the first one, so, goodbye. 200 gold bear. Uh -huh. Ooh. Finished. That's oof. That's big oof. 
They know what they're doing. Hey, you guys, remember when I said that me and EG were going to die? They're <laughs> 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 fine. Be okay. Well, everyone else will be fine. Um, I got another yeah. one of these forms. Okay, are you all good with concentration checks and all that? You're all you're all good. Yep, failed the first one. Don't need to do the rest of them. Yeah, that works. Um, okay, so this guy is going to take a moment from chanting and take his goat head staff and oh, beat now. you over the head with it. <laughs> that is a nineteen to hit. Yeah, it hits. We're two bludgeoning damage. Is it kind of? Oh yes, <laughs> I'm still in bear form, baby. Oh my God, you're getting <laughs> lucky. And he will uh, move this way to start trying to get away from you, so you can take an opportunity attack. Hell yeah, brother! Yeah, let me look at my bear stats. Let me get all on them. Um. <laughs> After getting beat up. Yeah, so I'm going to make a good, good claw attack. Wait, okay, this is kind of cheating. So I can do a multi-attack, and I have bite and claws. My bite is a 1d8, but my claws is a 2d6. Do I choose, or is it always bite first? You can choose whichever you like. I'm, I'm clawing fine with the shit out of this. Dude. You can certainly try. Well, it's a 15 plus 6. Okay. It is going to use its redirection attack, and as you swipe at it, it grabs a hold of this goblin here and, <laughs> and swaps places with him, throwing himself in front of the attack. Uh, roll damage. That still works very well. Um, He'll run away. Uh, 12 points of slashing damage. You eviscerate this goblin. As you slash right through its whole being. Nice. Uh, Lady Belina, if you please. Uh, Lady Belina mutters to herself and she starts to dance across the stone here uh, and casting Blade Song. And she is going to cast a magic missile on the one that just beat up her bear friend. It will have to be more specific. Yeah. That was a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> Every the, single the, one. The mage with the, the, the goat. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And that is going to be 10 points of damage. Nice. Oof. Great roll. Yeah. Fantastic roll. As you just bombard him with spells, and he kind of backs up against the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Anime missiles. <laughs> and then he has the mom still alive. <laughs> I think. Is that what I see? Like an old woman in a cage? Yes. She, she appears uh, kind of like bound and like hurdle up in a, ca a corner of the cage. Okay. Great. And that is it for my turn. Okay. The hobgoblin goes and he's got this big old bear right here, you know? It's carving time. As far as he's concerned. Uh, so here comes a longsword. Let's we'll see right. how this goes. Get a 10 to That's hit. a 19. Okay, that hits. Okay. Uh, that is a three slashing damage. Oh, cool. So it takes me out of bear form, but it doesn't carry over any damage. Nice. So. But he does have An martial advantage. He does have most martial advantage. So yeah, let's move you back and give you give you a turn at uh, twelve, I believe. Yeah. Um. Or you go before the goblins. Thirteen. That's, Thirteen. That explains why he was before the goblins. Should... Okay. Uh. So he does have martial advantage, which does mean that he gets some extra damage coming your way in the form of six damage. All right. Cool. Oh yeah. No more roll twenty health. Um, six damage. Cool. One. As he cuts into you, and then uh, with the other goblin uh, beside him, he kind of feels the invigorated energy. As you shake back, he kind of 
pushes it through as you're turning back with his with his shield, cuts into you a bit extra. <laughs> Bernard, it is now your turn. Mm -hmm. Your friend has suffered grievous wounds. It is my turn. Bernard is going to rush up to right here, which is 30 feet. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't so, see the whole time the great thing about dynamic lighting is that I don't have dark vision so I couldn't see any of that room <laughs> so you are currently occupying the same space as Goblin I should note uh, so we uh, just move you back here for well, for now I have two extra arms uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, drop the torch alright uh, is that a, is that a free action? I'm yeah, assuming? releasing okay. releasing an item like that. Okay, and is this person the shaman? Does he seem to be like this one fleeing? Uh, he seems like the he seems important. You know, he's like a goblin, but with extra stuff on him. Right, but does he seem to be like running away? Um, or he seems backed into a corner and quite uh, in a spot. Okay. I'll take care of this one, Bernard. Sounds good. I don't know what voice that was. Um, <laughs> that, was that was definitely Mary. <laughs> it was Mary. It uh, was Mary. Almost okay. Remy, but Mary. Oh, yeah. Uh, got so many character voices. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, draw my sword and look at the Hobgoblin and say... Why don't you pick on me, big guy? Uh, and the shield is going to flash red, and I need a wisdom save from him. Okay. The wisdom save coming goblin. in. Uh, that is a 13. God! Did he just make it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, how was my... I feel like my save should be higher. Oh, well. And he shakes it off. Oh, well. And I slash down at the goblin in front of me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. That's what they're there for. Uh, Tara, you had, a, you, had a, you had an out plan. That is an 11 to hit. That will not hit as he sidesteps out of the way. Though you do have uh, an advantage with flanking. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'm very threatening right now. You're, <laughs> you know what? You were a bear a second ago. Now you're not. Uh, and that is a 24 to hit, so I think that'll hit. I no, actually, yeah, you guys hit. Uh, and that is seven points of damage. Slash that damage. is perfect as you lop its head clean off, True. send its body careening into the pillar. Hey, buddy. And as a uh, anything else? Uh, I do have a little bit of movement left. Can I just move to like right there? No, it's no. impossible. Yes, of course. Now that he's dead, just kind of step yes. over him, step in him. Yeah, mm. that is my that is my turn. Kick his body side. Uh, veiled. It is your turn. You are on a trap. Let's see. Give me a quick second here. All right, I'm going to use Cat's agility, feline agility, to double double my speed and end up here. Okay. That works. And I see the bigger enemy of the smaller two behind me, and I decide to attack him instead. And let's see if I can. Sorry, by bigger, you mean the hobgoblin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, 23 against the hobgoblin will hit. Four. 14 damage. All right. As you yeah. think this guy cuts in and uh, he's been harassing your friend he's, and you just kind of dash in quickly diving shot right between the eyes as he collapses. Nice. The arrow lodged yeah. directly into his eyebrow. Heck yeah. But it's time for the big guy's turn. Oh, it's a bugbear. Which... 
surprise for everybody else. How dare you? But it is a bugbear. <laughs> oh no. Goblin. Like a goblin on a road game. <laughs> um, and he will come streaming across and literally step up on the on the pillar here, come down. Oh, she's about coming in, messing up me, boys. And he is going to smack on into you, uh, Veiled. Uh, Shield! Disadvantage! Okay, well that's an 8. So I'm gonna <laughs> hope that doesn't hit. Oh wait, did I use the right one? Oh, I don't know if I actually used the right one. No, I didn't. Shit. Okay, let me make sure I have the right bonuses here. And it's still probably a miss, given low roll, but uh, 12. Sorry, 12 instead of 8. Misses. Okay, yes. So he comes and <clears throat> and just as you're about to be smushed, uh, you kind of glances off the shield of Bernard and that and he collides into the ground just blasting stone forward. Um, yeah. That is its turn. And that brings us back to Elora. So I'm going to move this direction. Um, and just a, DM, just a question in general, because I've never used it before. For spiritual weapon, the action is summoning the weapon and the bonus action is moving it, or is the bonus action itself with spiritual weapon summoning it and moving it? Yes. Yeah, the latter. The last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, moving it, in, it, moving it in subsequent turn turns a bonus action. Okay. Right. Okay. So then I'm going to uh, stay up against that wall and use a crossbow to the shaman in the corner. All right. Take a shot. Oh, that was a two. <laughs> That is not going to hit as it goes sailing past his head as he kind of <laughs> turns to look at you. Can't kill me, great Edvard. And then uh, bonus action, can I cast spiritual weapon? Yep. Um, find a weapon for you. And you should be able to attack on this turn with it as well. Yeah. I believe so. Um, what form does your weapon take? So it's going to be kind of like a tidal wave. It's going to look like just getting smacked in the face with the tidal wave. Perfect. We will say this is your tidal wave. I will give you control of it in a second. Hopefully this works. Let me know if you can control that. Yep. Wait, do Perfect. Do you just have a token of water on hand? No, it's a sword and it's... Oh, that's, of... so that's a sword? Technically, it's just, it's a, it's a, yeah. I'm I don't blind. know. I, I, I looked it up. No, it looks like a wave. <laughs> it did. To me, it looked like, well, I thought you just had like a token of water in your, in your, like, um. I came prepared. Thing. No, I, this is a, <laughs> promise I'm not that prepared. So that was a 12 roll with the four. 12? No, unfortunately, as it comes in towards him, he kind of ah, blocks it away with the goat head. I'm going to keep it there, though, because I'm probably just going to keep smacking him with it. Mm -hmm. Totally Sorry. fair, which brings us to Kroviar. Oh, it looks like you're in a little bit of a mess now. Back into bear form with my last <laughs> use of wild shape. And this time I won't delete my token, so I'm still in the thingy. But here I am. I have control. This Perfect. is my battlefield now. <laughs> and I attack, multi-attack. So it, this time it'll be first one bite, second one claw. So the okay. first one is a 13 plus numbers. Um, okay, I'm gonna... Uh, 19, I think. 13 plus 6, 19, and the second one is 17 plus 6. For yeah, those, 23, will, I think. those will both hit. So the first one that hits is going to be a 10 points of piercing damage as I bite <laughs> and I rip apart 
And I come up, and I come down with a slash. And that's going to be uh, another 10 points of slashing damage. Like, and I slash at him. <laughs> and I rip him to shreds. All right. Well, that brings the end. As you kind of just grab at him and toss him into the cage and slash at him, he looks in a real bad way. But he is still standing. Uh, and it is the goblin's turn. This one is going to move here. And this one will drop its bow, uh, draw its scimitar, and close with the incoming wizard. So, first goblin coming at Veiled will be a 23 to hit. Hits. Okay, I just want to make sure. For five slashing damage. Got it. Okay, and this one is going to Lady Belina. Slashy scimitar. For 21 to hit. Uh, shield. Twi- uh, that blocks it? Yep, blocks it. Perfect. Okay, as it's kind of coming in, it just <laughs> tap, balances off. Kind of <laughs> as it's working away at you. It is now the shaman's turn. And you are all in such a perfect little... Mm. What are you talking about? No, I would never do anything uh, like uh, burning hands. (laughs) Except it's in a 15-foot cone. So I need to actually measure this out. (laughs) So you get it. Oh, actually, wait. Uh, Yep. Is that everyone in, or targets that he chooses? Everybody <laughs> in the cone, except selective moving. fire. So moving this so way. So the, the the best way to do this is that's how wide the cone is. Okay. Um, or, well, I guess I guess more. Yeah, he will this do it far. like like this. So I guess. Oh wait. Why is your 15 different than my 15? I don't know. This is confusing. Oh, uh, because you you probably have... Oh, okay, okay. I got it, I got it. Okay, I think just so... one of them was snapping a grid and one was not. He will yeah. instead then step here. And then 15, 15. Okay. All y'all take some burning hands damage. Not me, though, right? Uh, not Lady Belina. You are safe, but everyone else can take 17. Uh, make me a dexterity saving throw, rather. <laughs> that works. Two plus zero. Nice. 14 total? Mm, 15 for me. Okay. Uh, so you need to roll a 15 or better. So everyone can take, uh... What was that? 17 damage, half. Is someone good at math do this? Uh, uh, that would be eight. Eight. Eight, uh, eight if you made it. 17 if you didn't. Uh, Bernard throws up his shield and hides completely behind it, taking no damage. Uh, so, oh, okay. Well, that's fine then. <laughs> he certainly tried. Well, that brings us to Lady Melina. Um, Goblin at your door. Yes, I am going to turn around though and fire a magic missile at second level at the mage because I'm sick of him burning my friends. That's fair. Yeah. Um, 11 points of uh, force damage. Yeah, no, you bombard him and his body splatters over the, across the. Uh, <laughs> boom, the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Be gone, you evil man! This will go brr. Brr. Like a, like a scarface shootout as bits of him are blown out of himself. Hold up, wait a minute. It's a magic missile. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else? I move forward here. Fantastic. So. It's now, well, he's dead. 
So. <laughs> 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 Love that. Uh, so, it is now Bernard's turn. What do you do, Bernard? Uh, I survey the battlefield. How are all my friends looking? Are they? All, are any of them looking bloodied? I yes. Yeah, but I'm good. Okay, Bernard is going to uh, bash his sword onto his shield, and the runes on his shield light up in a uh, scintillating red and green tone. And he is going to use Channel Divinity um, to cast Turn the Tide, which uh, every creature that I choose within 30 feet regains 1d6 plus 3 hit points. Ooh. Ooh, Nice. Wow. That does turn. (laughs) <laughs> that is nine hit points. Oh, you roll it. Nice. Okay. Nice, um, nice, and nice, then nice. was that was that an action or a bonus action? Channel Channel the Bendy, that action. is that is an action. So uh, that was not a spell. So I can still cast a bonus action spell, correct? Uh. Kind of feels like a spell, but I suppose it. it it's is. a class feature. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Whatever, you, whatever you want to rule, e- either way, it's fine. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. And as he does that, he turns to the big uh, goblin on steroids and Rogaine, and he uh, his shield flashes again, and I need the uh, bugbear to make a wisdom save. Okay. Notoriously wise, eleven. Yes, <laughs> mm. that bugbear is compelled to duel, which means um, it has disadvantage on attack rolls uh, on creatures other than me, um, and that's about it. Yep, that's about it. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. Failed. You are surrounded. I am. I'm going to look over at Bernard and say, you got this. Disengage. (laughs) Over here. Like a true hero. (laughs) But but don't worry, I got you. And um, use my bow to attack this one. Yeah, go for it. 17 will definitely 17 hit. 17 to hit for 17 damage. Oh, <laughs> oh my lord. Just, <laughs> he, catch, you catch, he catches that arrow with his face and goes flying with it <laughs> as he collides with the wall. <laughs> Cheers! I look back and I say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. This bugbear don't like this one bit. Where are the boys at? He screams. Uh, and uh, before he comes at you, he says, Oh, yo, you look in here now. And he's going to use oh? the action. And behind you, you see. No. The boys. The boys. Where the you boys at? <laughs> apparently, apparently, consecrated tombs are for the boys. <laughs> Everyone knows. Everyone Just, you know. knows it's for he, the boys. He really said, he really said, the homies are here. <laughs> so as he does that, you hear the round of a corner as three goblins keep on run around and join the fray. Hmm. And then he will make an attack. He can try. He can certainly try, sir. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Shit. It's... He succeeded. He succeeded. Uh, that is 11 piercing damage as he 
blocks this morning star just over your shield and into your shoulder. Easy, easy, easy money. Right. So that is its turn, which brings us to Alora. You're up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see that uh, Vale's next to me, and I'm gonna. Are you okay? Do you need any healing? Are you good? I'm fine, thanks. Okay, and then I'm going to take my movement towards the foot. I'm gonna move here. Mm-hmm. Um. And well, how many? How much movement do I have? Five. Uh, I have thirty. Okay, so I'm gonna move here to come into fray with them. Yeah. And then I'm gonna cast uh, Shatter. Mm. Oof. All right. Uh, so that's a con save for them, I believe? Yes. If mine, uh, all right. Let me make some constitution saving throws for goblins. As everyone knows, the greatest stat, goblin kind, uh, 13, 10, and 11. The 13 saves, the other do not. Okay. Roll off that damage. So close. He almost um, all made it. Hang on, let me pull up this part. So it's 3d8. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 15 damage? Yep. Woof, okay. As that force of sound explodes behind them, reverberates around the halls. Uh, round, even rounding down. These, all three of these goblins just plaster against the walls and become goobified, basically. In front of you. <laughs> I'll vomit. And, and, uh, a lot is coming out of you. What what did you eat? Looks like the boys left you. I don't <laughs> dry heat. I love this. <laughs> right. My oh, uh, you also have your spiritual weapon. Pull the ears out though, and just Oh, I don't think there's much to, to recover no. for the okay. ears, unfortunately, from those guys. There's others, but also at the moment, you do have your spiritual weapon up. Oh, yeah, and then my spiritual weapon, I have to move it. How many feet can it move? 30 feet? 20, 20 feet. 20 feet. Oh, you're so good at this. Plenty, <laughs> plenty of space. So... Or I can move it to, like, here. I can't get it any further. No? Right. You can move it. No, you can. You can. You can. Oh, it's, can it's fine. Yeah, it, that's not a. That's not like a pillar. It's kind of like a, a raised table, if you will. Yeah, and it kind of moves. It's like a flying thing, so it does it, not as restricted as like people movement. All right. Um, and then I'll hit to attack him with the spiritual weapon. Go for it. The sixteen to hit. Sixteen will just hit. Oh, all right. I'm, I don't know the damage on this either. Uh, Selena, do you know the damage? Should be 1d8. So whatever weapon you decided it was, like, or your, um, plus your, um, ma- um magic attack, right? Yeah, one, 1d8 okay. plus spellcasting ability modifier. Right. So six total. Thank you. All right, as this wave kind of just <laughs> plashes up against him and reforms back in front of him. Which brings us to Krovia. Bear <laughs> Um... Let's uh, do, 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 do. Let's take a walk over here. And as a large creature, can I just kind of like climb on this a little bit? Yeah, totally. Climb upon that altar. Give your okay, give on. give your sacrament. There we go. Okay. Tell us about the bear news. Um, <laughs> um, this is just straight rolls, right? I'm not flanking with anyone. Not flanking, unfortunately. There is someone lacking the space. So, Sorry. That is fine. <laughs> um, okay, so bite first, claw second. Bite first with a probably miss. I think that's a 15. That will miss. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a 15. That's a miss. So let's go with the second one. Yeah, it's even worse. I am slipping on the bloody altar underneath. Yeah, you you have that kind of white 
cloth beneath you, and as you kind of climb up on it, you it comes out under your claws, and you smack your head onto the altar a little bit. It's, it's embarrassing. People see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be and, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll end my turn as the looming bear of tenacity and death. <laughs> Uh, right, so on this goblin's turn, um, the bugbear is going to activate its second villainous action and is going to grab the goblin and chuck it at Bernard. (laughs) (laughs) Do something. Oh my god. Oh, you got in there. And that is a 21 to hit. I will take take that gladly. (laughs) Uh, so... (laughs) Um, oh you my God. take <laughs> nine points of bludgeoning damage as this thing <laughs> collides with you. That's the most and... damage that happened all night. <laughs> does it explode or something? It does not. It is. It takes uh, a part of that, but and it, it looks very hurt. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> it collides with you and kind of <laughs> crumples to the floor a little bit. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Lady Bellona. Like, yeah. uh, uh, Lady uh, Bellona. <laughs> Seeing that, I uh, wield my longsword and I thrust it at the goblin with uh, green flame blade. Yeah, the green flame blade. Uh, does a. Ended suffering, please. Uh, 14 hit? <laughs> No, it will not. As you rise up, it kind of like turns on the ground and like weakly holds up a shield and it catches your blade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then I will stay here. All right. <laughs> Brings us to Bernard. You just got smacked with a goblin. I just don't know how to feel right now. <laughs> Violent. Pure, pure, like what part of the goblin hit you? I, I don't know. It was I, the ass. I just, <laughs> I got hit with, I got hit with, I hit, I got hit with goblin ass. Like I don't know how to feel about this. Um. You can't make this shit up, folks. You can't make this shit up. Okay. Well, can I, can I come here or no? Uh, yeah. It'd be an occupied space, sort of. Technically, he was in your <laughs> space, though. So we'll say, yeah. Like in the middle of getting hit, they just kind of transition spaces. <laughs> he's he's just gonna like look at the goblin and put a hand up, like, really? And uh, uh, is going to hold his sword up, which is going to glow. Um, and he is going to drop compelled duel because no one's really being threatened by him right now, except for me. Um, and he is going to cast Thunderous Smite on his sword and attack the bugbear with advantage because he is flanking. That is true. Hit, damn you. That's a uh, 14. As you bring your sword down, he kind of just... He's flanking. Yeah, with advantage. Yep, that was with advantage. Ah! As you as you bring your sword down with such certain, he just kind of like backhands it with his shield. Oh, I got to try harder than that. Well, you the mate. good thing, the good thing is, is that <laughs> thunderous smite doesn't go away. <laughs> Thank you. Him, you get him next time, champ. <laughs> Failed. I am going to disengage just to end up on this other side okay um and i come around from the behind the goblin um tap his shoulder as i pull out my as i pull out my short sword and say here hold this and i stab him <laughs> all right roll for it <laughs> Yeah, 24. So 24 will hit. <laughs> 21 damage! Get one health left. <laughs> Turk's face! 
He had one health left, okay? You didn't have and to do him I, like that. I do it very lovingly. <laughs> it's a slow it's a slow push. You're, You're just, just torturing this poor goblin. You, you, you kind of you, you brush your hand against his face, put a hand on his shoulder. Shh. It's, it's over now. And just his whole, through his whole body, your short sword just clears through rib, through chin, just as he kind of just falls I apart, say, bisected. Right before his the the light fades from his eyes, give me your ears. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, god. oh no! Um, okay, is, is is that your turn? <laughs> Yes. Okay, good. All right, back back into the bugbear. <laughs> hey, you all know what this villainous action is. Where are my boys at? Oh my god, there are... You've that... got to be kidding me. It's a villainous action. It just keeps happening. I'm sorry. How many boys are there? There's Where are my boys? boys oh my god. There's a lot of boys. They just keep coming, man. Where were these? Are there like <laughs> hidden tunnels that we missed? What is going on? Don't know, man. We goblets. missed a secret. We missed a secret door. They're goblins. But it's his turn, and he's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna try and smack Bernard. Oh, gosh, he better that's a, not. That's a thirteen. That is a miss. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. And Laura, you got two more gobby boys. <laughs> As I hear him say that, I'm going to be like, and I'm like, <laughs> thick in the corner, and I see the two more coming out, I'm like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and I'll cast Thunder Wave. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to stay right there. Oh. Oh, you might have to move closer for Thunderwave. Yeah, within five feet. Okay. Within five feet? Okay, I'll step through this squishy part there. Through the guck. <laughs> through the squishy part. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Thunderwave is ten feet reach, actually. Oh, so you only have to go slightly yeah, into the It just originates part. in front of you and then blows up in a, in a square outwardly. All right, well, I'll stand halfway in the guck. Great, but what, what, what do they have to make? It is constitution saving throws. Ah, the famous goblin stat that didn't liquefy anyone <laughs> last time. Second to wisdom. A nine and a four. <laughs> they both they both fail. Um, and that is 2d8 thunder damage, and they're pushed 10 feet away, so. All right, roll me, roll me some damage. <laughs> I'd love to see their corpses ragged all away. Well, so 12 damage? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and all the rest of the guck follows. You just, they get, the, the first thing that splatters is the blood in their eyes, and then they slowly join it as this pfft, smashes up against the wall. This one hits up against the stairway up here. Activates the trap. The trap. Sits down. <laughs> Actually, the goblins, you notice, are not heavy enough to activate the trap. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so there you go. Engineering. You you learn some lore. <laughs> and then uh, spiritual weapon. I'll just go to hit the bugbear again. Yes, do it. Oh, that's a five. That would mm. not hit. As the wave comes <laughs> in, and he seems surrounded, but he kind of bats away the the wave with his morning star. And, uh, yeah. Just seize it. Nope. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Fovier. All right. After speaking booping, of slipping and booping my nose into the to the altar, <laughs> now I will attack with advantage. Okay. That is a sixteen. E yes. For the bite and. Miss for the claws. You get the easy one. I let you off easy. Uh, you're gonna take ten points of piercing damage. Like, all right. As this thing, uh, as you uh, bite into his shoulder, you go Aah! as he's blocking away the spiritual weapon. Uh, there are no goblins anymore. 
keep it there just in case. The boys have no Lady Belina. There's no now. more boys. <laughs> this temple is no longer for the boys. <laughs> the temple is covered in the boys. But the grave is for the boys. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at the lady, but I'm gonna lob a fire bolt over at uh, Bugbear. Sure thing. Uh, could you just oh, trace your path to make sure you didn't uh, trigger an opportunity attack? I went one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there a... It just, it, as long as you don't go within five feet of him, and uh, no, it's totally went... fine. Oh, okay, yeah, you went around, totally fine. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, sure. I think I missed. I, I threw a nine. I've been rolling badly tonight. Uh, nine, <laughs> nine plus what, though? No, that was a nine. <laughs> oh, nine total. <laughs> yeah, nine. No. Uh, I'm just too distracted by the, the old mother. I'm like, honey, we're here for you. We're going to take kind of... care of you. Is she, is she even conscious? Uh, it, it appears lightly so. Okay. Uh, kind of almost in a, in a, in a daze, almost okay. concussed. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you kind of blind fire behind and you hear hit something. Uh, <laughs> but everyone else can see you hit the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's fine though. It. Uh, Bernard, will you please die? <laughs> you gonna attack it with my long sword <laughs> with advantage? Yep. With your okay. Foot. Well, that's gonna hit. Let's see if I get a crit. I do not. 20, <laughs> 23 20, to hit. Twenty three will hit. And it is going to take. Roll, roll, come on, roll. You can do it. <laughs> I am done. <laughs> With advantage and everything? Uh, no, it hit. Oh. It, rolled, it rolled on 3d8, four. <laughs> <laughs> plus, plus three, seven points of damage. <laughs> but I need it to make a strength saving throw. Okay. Bugbears, famously very weak. Uh, that is a 17. Never mind. Okay. Sorry, right. he would have just went fall fell into my arms. Uh, I am I am going to kind of circle around and be right through though. Okay. Uh, veiled. Starry water. <sighs> oh my Sorry. gosh, I'm very conflicted on what I want to do. <laughs> I, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to um, I'm going to whistle to him and say sleep, please. <laughs> and that's 24 hit points. Does that take him you down? You kind of see and he kind of is fighting it and he goes uh, I don't get you. Oh, and he passes out. And I'll walk over and, and say, anybody want to? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, that's <laughs> my turn. Uh, I mean, we can keep going in initiative order, if we like. Uh, or we can all come together and kill Yes, him. yes, please, please, <laughs> TPK him. Can we... Can we like ring wraith this? Just like stand over him and just. <laughs> On the count of three. <laughs> well, I rolled in it for my first hit. So on our count of three, we can all just shout our damage. All right. Yeah, every, everybody can basically roll a critical hit and tell me how you're killing this person. 20 points of damage as I pierce my bear claws into him as he slumps down. Just <laughs> who else wants to go? 14 points of damage as I just kind of push, push the blade into him just a little bit and then let someone else go. <laughs> Death I by want... a thousand puncher wounds. <laughs> I'll go ahead and um, I'll just kind of like tap him on the head and inflict wounds. Oh, oh God. okay. God. 
<laughs> he can't even save. Oh, you monster. My god. And it does double damage too? <laughs> I don't think it's so. damage. That's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> That's 22 total. So 44? I love sleep. I love it. That is a great God, sleep. that is evil. I, like, <laughs> like Bernard's gonna look at you like, oh my God. This, this is how Veiled and Alora do their big business. Uh, Lady Bellina, are you getting you get in on yes. this? Yes. I will uh, just think my long sword into his heart for 11 points of damage. Fantastic. All right, and wow. Veiled, did you get him already? So he's very dead. He's, very he's, much. He's course. stabbed. He's ripped apart. What do you? What do you want? What do you want to do to him now? He had a damaging spell blast his body to pieces. Oh, more boys. I just I kneel down, get cradle his face, close his eyes as I say, I want your ears. <laughs> and it's oh, it's all over now. And I don't even attack. I'm, I, I, the damage is done. No, no, fuck it, fuck it. No, I need to attack. I need to. I, 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 I feel the urge. It's, it's with Nine. advantage. Yeah. It's nineteen. Yep. Yep. You. Yep. You, you brutalized this, this person's body. And after, after, after I went back on myself and attacked him, I look at and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> And with that, the tomb is quiet beyond the flickering of flames. And the heavy panting of your party. Right can, here. can I please yell out? Boys! <laughs> Where are the boys? <laughs> and I'm alas. Just gonna, like, point over my shoulder. <laughs> But alas, there were no boys to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wish to crack open a cold one <laughs> with the boys. You basically did. If you left him for we're, a few more minutes. We're way after cracked open. It's time to time for the pouring out. We gotta pour one out for the boys. Several ones. <laughs> Everyone kick, get your kick. water skins out, start pouring. Kicks the corpse just in case, the bugbear, just in case he, like, is not dead. Even though he is, do something. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, do something. <laughs> he does nothing. <laughs> he does nothing. I you think uh, Lady Belina was looking at the cage. Yeah. Can we open it? Is there? Can I search the body of the mage for a key? Uh, yes, the body of the mage does uh, have a key on him, as well as that goat head staff. And uh, I'll do official treasure uh, when you guys commit time to that. But you do are able to manage the key among the scattered body parts, and the cage kind of <laughs> opens very rustily and. Uh, there before you is an old woman who seems heavily concussed, confused, in rags. Um, can somebody heal her? <laughs> yeah, I'll head Stabilize over. Her. <clears throat> I'll do like a cure wounds. All right, yeah, she kind of begins coming to. <laughs> who are you? Here to save you. Are you the blacksmith's mother? My boy is a blacksmith, yes. Oh. Best blacksmith this side of the kingdom. Well, congratulations. You almost gave him a heart attack for getting caught. But we're here to save you. <laughs> oh, that, that's good. I, that, that's a bit rude. <laughs> um, Lock her up. Lock her back up. I, now I need a worker. We can't come back on this now. He has a promise to upkeep. Let's uh, let's get our tokuses out of here. Um, is there? A, is can we investigate? Like, what what kind of 
ritual were they doing here? Um, you can make me a religion check if you like. You do that. I'm gonna go and collect ears. <laughs> uh, an eleven. So, this is not any type of religion you are familiar with, but it seems darker than any, you know, standard standard kind of ritual. You know, uh, the incense is not so much incense as it is this strange bile. The blood is scattered everywhere. You see to your west the scattered, uh, the bloodied and gutted remains of what looks to be a doe. It's gruesome, and it looks to have been been you know going at it for a while. The candles on uh, associated with it have burned fairly low, and uh, it seems you've stopped something. But beyond that, you can't tell. Well, it looks like we stopped whatever this was just in time for better than worse. Just so they can't keep doing it or somebody can do it again? I say uh, smear or uh, you know take down whatever this is you know make sure that no one can use this altar table whatever it is again sounds about good if uh, we're all taken care of here sounds good to me all right as you guys are heading out the imposing statue of the night uh sees you as you leave the room oh with no one oh wait are you guys uh searching around for treasure and such yeah that, that yeah, too yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. okay wait, is that even a question turkey boy <laughs> i mean you never know sometimes people are altruistic like that they just leave. well you know what? i think if people say that if if they don't say that they are altruistic then i think they're taking the treasure <laughs> I, I would assume that taking the treasure rather than not taking Bernard right. would be, uh, he, he would walk up to the Statue of the Night um, and kind of look and investigate it as he dumps all of his lay on hands into himself. Sure. Um, as you kind of self medicate, uh, <laughs> um, you uh, stare at the statue and you can see uh, kind of at, across its head. On the wall behind it, you see uh, words carved in. The light is illuminating. Uh, if you were to keep this, you must first give it to me. Um, but beyond that, there's not much else. This knight is similar to all the other ones you've seen, only with slightly more intricate details upon its armor, uh, holding a sword that looks a bit nicer than the other weapons you've seen. And um, everyone else, uh, for a second, you guys find amongst this horde of things you find in bits and baubles and gems and small art pieces about 60, 200 gold, gold pieces. Ooh. Just just 200. <laughs> um, Additionally, You find where is the table? Here we go. This is the fun part. Not for me. Not future me, but current me. Um a potion and a scroll. Mm hmm. Mm. I don't. I don't think that anyone has the means to figure out what these things are at this moment, do they? Um, I spend an spend a ritual. I think, right? Identify. Uh, you can make me an Arcana check or 
uh, yeah. to identify the scroll oh. and a oh. nature or arcana check to identify the uh, contents of the potion. Ten. I rolled a ten. I have a plus five to arcana, but I rolled a five. <laughs> it is a magical scroll of <laughs> the beginner level difficulty spell, though deciphering at the moment you're unsure of the ritual used to enact it. But you could probably activate, you just aren't sure what would happen when you did. We'll try again next time, don't worry. <laughs> no hmm. Alright. So it's something we... about how, uh, how a staff looked. Oh, yes. Uh, the goblin shaman had a goat head staff. When I pick it up, do I feel any magic surging through it? No. Actually, you do. It has small amounts of magic, you feel, but you can make me an archon check to better decipher it. Um, sure. Um, this'll be fun. So I got a two, minus one. <laughs> so you are not certain, but you're pretty sure it's magical. I can just feel essences of reminating inside it what the fuck oh. they are, I just don't know, but <laughs> I can take it home. Maybe it'll help grow my potatoes. Who knows? Yes. The potatoes. The fucking potatoes. <laughs> uh, damn. The yes. boys, the potatoes. <laughs> uh, you said that it's holding the sword in one hand. Um, the statue. Yes. Uh, is there any other place where I could put my sword. Whoa. It, it, I mean, not by the looks of it. Its other hand is occupied pushing a shield into the ground. Can I inspect the statue for traps? Um, sure. Make an investigation check. Well, that's all happening. I want to try to copy down. Um, 11. Sure, you want to try to copy down the scroll? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you can start doing that. Um, it, uh, it's going to take some time for you to do that, uh, given you know, nat magical processes and kind of translating it, but on 11, you do not detect any traps upon this statue. It seems to be a statue with some vibes. What does the inscription read again? Oh, if you are to keep this, you must first give it to me. Sounds like a trade. Or you got to stab it. Right. Did somebody say stab? Yes, try it out. Is there a opening in the... Any slit or that seems as if any piercing weapon would fit through it? Any holding? Unfortunately, no. I mean, it's a statue. It's made of... It's very well defined and seems to have survived the toil of goblins getting at it, but it doesn't seem like it has any clear open spaces that you can see. I'm gonna um, be kind of really gross and creepy and walk over to one of the goblins that's not decimated? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's like two or three of those. You and... guys weren't completely thorough in your dismemberment of these guys. And I'm gonna open up his chest and pull the heart out. Mm -hmm. Kali Ma, yeah. Kali Ma. Yeah, and I'm gonna you know, walk over to Bernard and I'm gonna say, I don't know, maybe try this, because, you know, like, when you're in love with someone, you gotta give them your heart to get it, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I just kind of, like, hand it to him, and then I walk away, because I don't really know what if that's real or not. I'm just trying to, like, be helpful, but I know it's probably not. Look at you with the Kali Ma. <laughs> I just, like, touch the heart to the statue. <laughs> just extra kill a goblin. Moment where you <laughs> feel like something's about to happen, but it doesn't. Nothing happens. Hmm. It seems as if you just touched goblin heart for no reason. What if I touch my sword to the statue? Just tap it. Tap it. Ding, ding. Solid stone. 
pretty good quality, honestly. Um, and nothing happens. I grab the sword. Uh, on that? Yep. You. <clears throat> Get it. Very difficult to do. You can make me a strength check. Can I uh, help? Yeah, totally, with assistance. <laughs> of all the time in the world to not be thorough, and you choose here to, to do it, I'll start escorting the half-dead old lady out. I'll join in that, too. That, oh, is, a, uh, that is a ten. A ten? Ooh. You're unable with, to... With advantage? Oh, no, not with advantage. Advantage? <laughs> okay, with advantage, it's an eighteen. Alright, you pull and pull and pull and the statue sword kind of, you feel like it might be loosening. And no, nothing happens. You uh, find yourself more just leaning on the thing. Do, do, do you want to try again? I don't know how much more strength I have left in me. Well, you can try again. DM, would you allow a, another attempt? Hey, go for it. Oh. With advantage, I assist. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, Just want to put that up there for you guys to see. Please? Okay, 22. A 22? All right. You pull, and you pull, and you feel it loosening, and then <clears throat> the stone of the blade uh, detaches from the rest of the statue, and it kind of falls into your arms. That's so, just, it, is it just not a... the? Yeah, it's it's just it's just like a hunk of stone. Oh, so it's not an actual sword. Oh, that means it's a really nicely carved sword. Oh, it's we're just, just we're just dumb. <laughs> it's just carved in stone. I see. We we spent some time getting marble. Or whatever this is. It's some local quarry, you'd assume. Maybe it's a um, Well, I don't know about you, but luckily no one was around to see that. That was embarrassing. We Let us go. We all saw it. <laughs> Let's... We're still on our way out. We can see Bad over by what I said, no. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> Well, shall we? Yeah, I think with that we were gonna go on. <laughs> All right, lead the way. Uh, Crovier will lead the way. Wait, wait. Uh oh, I'll make sure to uh, gather all the dead bodies so that way we can trigger the trap, drag the big body. I'm too lazy to disarm it myself. This will be much more entertaining. You heard yeah. the man, Bernard. Bernard? Hmm. Hello? Sorry, deep in thought. Uh... <laughs> You've got time to do that another time. The time is now to do this time. I've been trying to figure out that riddle. <laughs> I guess it's nothing. <laughs> I know Me? it's not- I know it's not nothing, but I want to figure it out. Perhaps it is not your time. Wait. Can you do an intelligence check to get a hint? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> no, honestly. Someone yeah, else that, roll it? <laughs> you wanna, if you, if you see him puzzling over there, you can totally. Uh... Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, 12. 12? Um, great. You two. can't quite put it together, but you assume it has something to do with the order. I mean, it's a statue of the knight. Interesting. It's in a, in a so temple I, of the knights. I, I kind of jokingly said that I, I would roll one too. Are yeah. you allowing it? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, it's a 21. All right, you're jogging your memory to the first room where a, all those knights were kind of had like the inscriptions on them 
Like all, it seems like all the knights of the order, you know, were part of an order. They they swore an oath. Right. So you think that might have something to do with this, but you're not certain, or at least that's where the that's where the hint. I repeat. Lie. I repeat the oath. But insert Bernard Lamoyette in the name place. One second, I will write this to you so you can say that. You can clip it and get all. Oh. Discovery. I will swear an oath. An oath to an order that is dead. <clears throat> I, Bernard Lamoyette. Swear the Delian oath to serve law, battle chaos, and strive to keep the Delian law secret. All right. And as you finish saying that, you hear a <laughs> from this oh? wall over here open, and a passageway is revealed. And at the end, you see a light. And for simplicity, since I wasn't sure if anyone was going to to figure this out. I'll just move you over here. Uh, <laughs> is anyone else going to follow into here? Or... No. <laughs> Alright. Uh, sure. Sure, why not? Perfect. Alright, hold your horses, Bernard. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Take a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> not just yet. Alright, so I'll be moving characters around. Bernard, you sit right there. Right there. Right there there and uh crowbar crowbar you're going in i will hang out with the old dying lady outside <laughs> she's not important right now she was yesterday's mission <laughs> okay that sounds good you may proceed oh. thank you for following sure not you enter into this room, and you see alongside each or three on each side of you are three sarcophagi uh, emblazoned on the top, knights, uh, each of them uh, carrying a similar sword, each of them with intricately designed. At the top, you see a much more ornate and intricate sarcophagus. This one, as you take that first step in the room, kind of as the top kind of seems to open slightly or release itself. <laughs> uh, keeping a hand on the hilt of my sword, I will continue to walk forward. Okay. As you continue to move forward, nothing seems to change. The room is very still, and you can read that the, the, this sarcophagus is named, is numbered not with one name, but hundreds of names. Such so such was the name of the convention. You can't exactly tell where one ends and one begins, but at the top is simply a layer that says Grand Master. And then the names of hundreds, potentially thousands of people. And the, t the top is opened. Not completely opened, but it's been loosened by some mechanism. I will gingerly remove the lid it kind of pushes back against the wall it seems to stick there and inside you see skeletal corpse um, in armor almost perfectly preserved holding in its hand a blade and as you as the cast kind of touches the wall the hands loosen and form and just go and clasp onto each other and the blade is let loose Damn. before I do something that I might regret <laughs> I'm going to pop off another divine sense are there any undead in this room not as of currently you, you do get the sense that this now that this is like the sanctified place Oh, it like is. The, this you're is a like sanctified you're place. like in the donut hole of the donut hole, mm, the holiest of holies, and so many all holies. the effects of it kind of dimming in there. 
as you've opened this, have kind of almost not dissipated, as it's still very the holy, the sanct, sanct, sanctity of this place has been diminished, but you feel this is kind of almost renewing it, like you're like you're opening a sort of floodgate. I will reach down and lay a hand on its hands and say, thank you, brother, and then pick up the blade. And you're holding a sword. <laughs> you raise it up, and it is the same sword on all of the inscriptions. Uh, it carries this, uh, you know, it carries the Delian Oath along the uh, beginning of its blade, and as you hold it, you see that where the name Sexus Ferris used to stay is kind of wiped away. Bernard Lamoyette takes its place. Ooh. Interesting. I will replace my old sword into the tomb. And that will trigger the trap. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, it will stay. Up. Yeah, the, up. the skeletal hands will remain in place as they were, um, and your sword lies atop it. Um, and as you remove the sword, the you kind of see that the body and armor kind of like fade away into dust. Huh. As if some final effort were exerted by the order. All right. Hey guys, look, I got a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> I'm going to be like, oh, that's great. As I'm like wiping blood off of me. Everyone's pretty caked in it, to be fair. That's great. It's all cake. Wonderful. It's all cake. Well, shall we? Let's go home. All right. Round of, round of drinks, courtesy of these goblin ears. <laughs> and with that, the guys are able to carefully escort the mother to the to the blacksmith. Are able to. Oh, actually, wait, that's not the right music I want to play. I want to play this one. You're able to make your way back to Valaine. The town welcomes you back as heroes. You are lauded with praise and are awarded handsomely by the town council for your efforts, uh, both extraordinary and also for fulfilling the wanted bounties. Uh, they have apparently a separate chest set aside just for this. And they uh, pay you in full for your bounties and add an extra uh, 200 gold pieces onto your uh, treasury. No. 300. No, 400. <laughs> I mean, you can haggle, but... Um... Hey, look, uh, the, the gold is good and all, but I do have quite a large balance uh, at the tavern at the end. Uh... <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, you see, uh, Giselle and, and Go and, uh, you know, they're obviously there celebrating. Oh, no, 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 no. What you've done, you, you, you drink for free. And you, you kind of see Brecca kind of facepalm, like, we're gonna go fucking broke. Is this, is this like a retroactive thing, too? Because, uh. <laughs> Look, Yo, if you. Uh, yeah, Giselle, if you, it says, uh, if you keep doing um, good things, I suppose, uh, every once in a while, protect the town, I suppose you can have three free drinks a night. And we'll wipe away your debt, for now. Okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if anyone has any... Uh, last things they want to do? <laughs> Why are you all looking so glum? We have a party to celebrate. Raise your mugs in celebration. Whoa. <laughs> ah, the lots of you. You uh, all need um, some work. I'm going to go party a little more. <laughs> Cheers. I'll, sh I'll well, join you, Crovier. Cheers. El Elora and I will be traveling out somewhere else very soon, um, hopefully tomorrow. 
you all have proven yourself quite worthy. Uh, hands you each a little coin. If you don't wish to travel with us, um, although we would love your company, just keep an eye out for us and signals the coin. All right. You know where to find me. No, where? <laughs> the hills around the... Well, I where? See. If I go to that hill, will you be there? If I go to that one, will you be there? Uh, or do you just like... you? Is it you find me kind of thing? Like if I'm there, you, you know, know where I... Don't find me. You won't find me. I won't find you. We won't f find each other. How about that? Got it. <laughs> Just be in town. I'll I will sniff you out if you are around. Ooh, don't be so crass. <laughs> I don't know. This is how Perf pretty clean. So I find them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyone else have anything? To finish you up or good? All right. <sighs> With Thank the you, boys. everybody. The boys, <laughs> the boys oh, were slain. For the boys. Blood, the boys. sweat, tears were shed tonight. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, my name is Maturik. I've been honored to be your DM. Uh, this was the Delian Tomb, an adventure not created so much by Matt Coville, but he kind of just explained everyone exactly how to run it uh, through videos and said, go at it. So uh, be sure to check out some of his videos for uh, if you want to look into this. I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. Um, and yeah, if we could just go right down the line with closing remarks. So Lady Belina, if you would please lead us off. Oh, <laughs> good night and farewell. Thank you so much. All right. Where, and... wait, where can we find you? Oh yeah, where oh, can we find sorry. you? Yeah, give us all your, give us all your, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, us, give, give us a sign off. Here's your sign off. Where can we find you? What what are some oh, things okay. you're doing well, and uh, <laughs> and all those good things? Sure, I'm a tabletop girl without the eye on Instagram, and I'm tabletop girl with the eye on um, Twitch, and I run Curse Strad on Mondays and on Thursdays I run a Humblewood campaign. I've been doing for a year all of this campaign. We love my Humblewood. <laughs> a lot of fans of Humblewood here. Mm -hmm. Popcorn to Alora, aka Chrissy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, I'm Chrissy. I played Alora. Um, you can find me on mostly Instagram at innocent underscore bones. Um, you can also find me on the TEDx website. I am there as well. Um, I also do therapeutic gaming. So if you want to contact me in any of the social media formats, I can start helping you run therapeutic tabletop role-playing games. So that's where you'll find me. I had a great time tonight. I hope we get to do this again. Um, <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for a great time. So let's go with uh, Mr. Bernard, old man Ricky Bones. <laughs> New Grandmaster uh, of the Delian Order. <laughs> uh, I, guess, I guess so. Um, uh, hey, everyone. Tyrant uh, had a lot of fun playing uh, the not so crouch the old man bernard after a while there he kind of softened up a little bit i think um oh god what was he gonna say um okay upcoming events uh i'm not sure if there's anything happening before this but uh new harper's episode comes out on tuesday um and then uh toa uh tomb of annihilation is every other tuesday so uh tuesdays at around eight p.m. Central Time uh, are the times for both of those. And then uh, we do have an incredible Discord server. Um, that is the reason why we are all here uh, playing this game right now. Um, so that should be linked in chat. Um, if you are if you want to find more of our stuff that we're going to be doing or have done in the past, uh, you can find that on our YouTube or on the TPK website, which will also be linked in the chat. Um, I hope, I really hope someone's linking in the chat. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, keep your ears and eyes open for TPKCon, which is coming in September. Uh, oh. Popcorn to EG. Hey, I'm EG Critical. I played uh, Crovier the Hill Dwarf. 
to do the things. Um, yeah, follow us and do all the things that Tyrant just said. I believe this Saturday, the, this Saturday, next Saturday, we had a little issue with um, scheduling recently, but uh, Truly Evil will be popping around. Uh, 10 a.m. EST. Um, times are correct, I believe. Um, and yeah, come pop around for that and all of the rest of the shows that Tyrant has covered. <laughs> Thanks so much. Right. Popcorning it over to Veiled. Hey everyone, I'm Devin. Go by Dev Develops on Twitch. Um, you can find me on most social media at Devin Ray Ten. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, support women in gaming. Keep supporting us. It first time thank you so much everyone and let's keep it up yeah all right uh i did forget one thing uh that i have to plug uh next wednesday these these fools are letting me do another one of these uh <laughs> so be sure to check that out as well uh and thank you all so much again thank you so much to my players you guys are wonderful uh, you know the first time dming here with you guys this is a perfect group for this mm -hmm. y'all are rock stars no one died, which is great. Uh, and I hope you all had a great time. I hope everyone in the uh, community had a great time. And my gosh, I am just, whew. But yeah, good night, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>